the Mid-States Football League. Tonight, from Hart Park in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, it's the Door County Destroyers against the Lincoln Way Patriots for the 2016 MSFL Championship title. Tonight's game is brought to you by Brewskies near 76th and Blue Mound Road in Wauwatosa. Now here to call all the action, here's Don Wadowitz and Steve Sleepka. Good evening from Hart Park in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, a suburb of the Milwaukee area. We have the 2016 Mid-States Football League Championship game taking place here at Hart Park. Wauwatosa, you also hear us refer to it as Tosa, as that's what the locals refer to it is as here. And it's been a rainy, drizzly, overcast, and cool day here in southeastern Wisconsin. the field it's a little bit slick out there I was walking the field a little bit earlier and it's gonna pose some challenges for these teams and it could uh, could play an outcome in tonight's contest as that ball will get slick from being set on the artificial field turf here at Hart Park but it's a perfect fall evening for football at kickoff it's gonna end up being around 56 degrees and there's almost no wind to speak of. The wind that is blowing is going from the north to the south, but it's very slight. The flag barely moving here at Hart Park in Wauwatosa. I'm Don Wadowitz, going to be joined in a few minutes by Steve Slivka, and also want to thank Ivan Ortega. He's the man that's behind the scenes doing all the video work for you at, that you're going to see here when we go to live video in just a little bit. We're getting ready for the award announcements for all the players of the year and the executives of the year those types of awards those are going to take place on the field in just a minute here and it's going to be St uh, Steve Sleefka and Rob Feltner leading the way on those and you'll be hearing them popping through our system in just a couple of minutes as they're heading out there and they've got the hardware out there now and they're going to do those award presentations before the game at halftime we will also carry for you the live presentations of the four members that have been inducted into the Mid-States Football League Hall of Fame. So uh, we'll be having all that action and carrying that for you here this evening as well at halftime. And also at halftime, if we have time, we'll play an audio interview pre-recorded with the MSFL president, Rob Feltner. Had an opportunity to talk to Rob about how this season went and what the MSFL is looking for as we head into the future. So those things will be taking place along with a, what should be an exciting game here. Door County Destroyers, they won the Northern Conference title. They took down the Racine Raiders at Historic Horlick Athletic Field a couple weeks ago, and the Lincoln Way Patriots got by the Chicago Thunder for the third time this season two weeks ago at Andrews High School, and they made their second consecutive trip to the Mid-States Football League Championship game. They dropped that game last year to the Racine Raiders. They're hoping to avenge that loss against the Northern Conference as they will play the Door County Destroyers here tonight. And should just be a minute now. I think they're just waiting for one more maybe award recipient to get to the field before Steve starts with the award announcements from the field. But a beautiful facility here at Hart Park, a nice press box, and we've got this thing completely packed with uh, media personnel, got a couple of broadcasts going, as well as some other things going on here. And should just be a moment as it looks like they're getting the final folks out there organized for the award presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2016 MSFL Championship. Tonight, we present our award winners, and we will start with the Conference Championship Trophy presentation. In the north, first we'd like to welcome the Door County Destroyers. The Southern Conference champion, Lincoln Way Patriots. 
for the third year in a row, the MSFL MVP, Tony Powell, Lincoln Way Patriots. A new team to the MSFL, Franchise of the Year winner, Milwaukee Chargers. Executive of the Year winner, Matt Nelson, Racing Raiders. Assistant Coach of the Year, Anthony Wooden, Racing Raiders. Head Coach of the Year, Chris Van Stone, Chicago Thunder. Rookie of the Year, Mike Miller, Milwaukee Chargers. Special Teams Player of the Year, Eric Natwick. Eric is not here today. Please give him a big hand. Offensive Player of the Year, Quarterback, Nick Brown, Quad City Raiders. And last but not least, Defensive Player of the Year, Carl Grant, Chicago Thunder. Thank you to all our award winners. Let's have a great game tonight. So Steve Slivko with the presentations of the awards that uh, were well earned. And as you heard, Tony Powell, three-time MVP. He is the quarterback of these Lincoln Way Patriots. And we'll be talking more about that in just a few minutes. But in the Mid-States Football League, there will be a first-time champion here in 2016, the Door County Destroyers. They finished 10-4 and four overall, 9-3 and three in Mid-States Football League action. And they will take on these Lincoln Way Patriots who finished 12 and one overall and 11 and 0 in the MSFL. This is the 17th league championship game that has been played in the Mid-States Football League. The Lincoln Way Patriots ran the table in the MSFL and beat the Chicago Thunder in the Southern Conference Championship game 21-14 to advance to this game. It was the third time the Patriots beat the Thunder this season. It's the third MSFL championship game appearance for the Patriots. They lost to the Racine Threat in 2009 and to the Racine Raiders in 2015. The Door County Destroyers, meanwhile, had to beat the Racine Raiders in the Northern Conference title game. The Raiders had beat Door County in the Northern Conference championship game last season and had won all four previous meetings between the two teams. Door County overcame a 14-zip deficit in front of over 1,500 fans at Historic Horlick Athletic Field and scored 31 unanswered points to eliminate the Raiders 31-14. Racine had won the last two league championship games in three of the last four. This is the Destroyer's second season in the MSFL. They previously won the Wisconsin State Football League Championship in 2014 before making the move to the MSFL last year. Lincoln Way, they rely on their offense, led by quarterback Tony Powell, who, as you just heard, the league most valuable player for the past three seasons. The Patriots are the top offense in the league. The offensive line for the Patriots is among the best, featuring two first-team all-league selections in tackle Michael Johnson and guard Leon Hill. The Patriots receivers complement Powell well. Lexus Jackson was a first-team all-league selection, grabbing 30 passes for 552 yards and 12 TDs. However, Jackson won't be present for the championship game as he went back to complete his education at the University of St. Francis. That means Powell will have to rely more heavily on Steve Trudeau, a second-team all-league selection, who had 38 grabs for 608 yards and 9 TDs this season. Anthony Hughes earned honorable mention all-league honors. He had 33 catches for 541 yards and 5 TDs. Calvin Phillips joins Powell in the backfield. Phillips, an honorable mention all-league choice, rushed for 665 yards this season, averaging 8.4 yards per carry, and he scored eight TDs. He added five more touchdowns receiving and nearly 200 yards through the air. The defensive side of the ball might be the concern for Lincoln Way. While the offense outscored the next best team in the MSFL by over 100 points on the season, the defense allows the second most points of any playoff team in the league. Only one player on the defensive side of the ball earned all-league honors for the Patriots, and that was defensive tackle Perry Sanders. 
Sanders recorded 14 tackles, three sacks, two tackles for loss, one fumble recovery, two interceptions, and scored two defensive TDs from his defensive tackle position. The, link, the uh, Door County Destroyers, meanwhile, they live and die by their defense. The Destroyers allowed the second fewest points in the MSFL in 2016. Nearly half the points the Door County defense allowed came in two regular season games against the Racine Raiders. Four players on the Destroyers defense received all league honors. Safety Brian Beachler was the lone first team choice. Beachler nearly hung it up in the offseason due to a serious health issue. Shortly after Christmas, Beachler suffered a digestive tract rupture that resulted in a hole in his esophagus. Beachler had to have emergency surgery and spent two weeks in the hospital. He lost a lot of weight but was able to make it back for the season opener for Door County. The strength of the Door County defense is that linebacking core. Linebackers Donnie Johnson and Chris LeClue, who is also one of the owners of the team, received second team all league nods. Johnson led the team with 85 tackles. He added 16 tackles for loss, six sacks, four fumble recoveries, and one interception. The interception came on the final play of the Northern Conference Championship game, and he returned it 50 yards for a TD. LeClue was second on the team in tackles with 75. He led the team with 17 tackles for loss, eight sacks, and six forced fumbles. The other starting linebacker for Door County is A.J. Hamilton. Hamilton had 63 tackles and five interceptions on the season. He also scored two touchdowns, including an 89-yard pick six that secured the win in the Northern Conference title game. Cornerback Jake Hall was an honorable mention all-league selection after grabbing nine interceptions and scoring two touchdowns this year. The Destroyers have a couple of latecomers to the defense that made an impact over the second half of the season as well. Defensive end Adam Brandt posted 25 tackles, 11 of those for loss, and had nine and a half sacks in about half a season. Cornerback TJ Holbert moved from wide receiver to corner. He was one of their top receivers in the first couple of games of the season, and he made an immediate impact on the defensive side of the ball as well. He's had six interceptions in just about half a season at corner. On the offensive side, the Destroyers lost their starting quarterback, Dan Parker, early in the season. After experimenting with Nathan Smithson and TJ Arndt, the coaching staff settled on Arndt, who hasn't missed a beat. Arndt is only completing 46% of his passes, but has thrown for over 1,600 yards and 14 touchdowns. He's tossed 15 interceptions on the year, but 12 of those have come against the Northern Conference playoff teams in the Raiders and the Milwaukee County Chargers. The offense relies on first-team all-league selections in running back Tamar Scott and wide receiver Andre Wilson. Scott rushed for over 1,000 yards and scored 11 touchdowns on the season. Wilson might be the best receiver in the league. He caught 47 passes for 936 yards and 9 TDs. He's become known for amazing acrobatic grabs on this season. Protecting Arndt and clearing the way for Scott are first-team all-league center Ryan Zulke, one of the team's other co-owners, and honorable mention all-league tackle Dan Harris. Heading into the game, it looked like if it was going to come down to special teams that Door County might have the advantage. Their kicker punter Eric Natwick was named the Mid-States Football League Special Teams Player of the Year. He was honorable mention all-league selection at kicker and a second-team all-league choice at punter, averaging nearly 40 yards per punt and placing eight punts inside the 20-yard line. He also had made 21 of 27 field goal attempts with a long of 44 yards and converted all but two extra point attempts. Natwick, though, is not available for Door County. He has a wedding that was scheduled, and he's not going to be at the game. So that leaves everything up to A.J. Hamilton, it looks like, when it comes to punts and kickoffs. Hamilton, though, it's not going to be his first time handling these duties for Door County. Hamilton, 13 kickoffs with one touchback on the season. He's also averaged a little over 36 yards per punt, including a long of 47, placing two of his 10 punts inside the 20. But still, when you lose the special team, team's player of the year that is a big loss for the door county destroyers heading into tonight's contest against the lincoln way patriots meanwhile the patriots who had been without uh, linebacker gary young for much of the season young went off to play in california i just talked to him before the game started he was getting all taped up so gary young is going to be in the house for the lincoln way patriots and that's a big ad that's like a free agent ad at this point in time heading into the championship game we're going to step away for just a minute, and we'll be back with you here on the MSFL Championship Game broadcast in just a minute.
check, 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 check. Hello? Check, check, check. Okay, we're good. Okay. Check. Check, check. One, two, one, two. Hi, Evan. My name is Steve. How's it going? Hope everybody hears us. If you're out there tonight, we are on right now. Tune in. Mid-States Football League Championship. Don Wadowitz, Steve Slivka on the call. Uh, video is brought to you by SHP Films. And we are out here in Hart Park. Wonderful Watosa. Scouts Honor Protect Productions. All right, welcome back to Hart Park in Wauwatosa. Don Wadowitz along with Steve Sleepka and Ivan Ortega on the camera work here for the 2016 Mid-States Football League Championship game. It's the Lincoln Way Patriots who haven't lost an MSFL play yet this season, and they'll be taking on the Door County Destroyers who had to get that Racine Raiders monkey off their back just to, for the opportunity to get here. They did so, and now these two teams are going to battle it out, Steve, here at Hart Park. It's an exciting game, and I think we th all of us thought the Lincoln Way Patriots would be here tonight, but I don't know how many thought the Door County Destroyers would be. I think it was widely assumed that it was going to be a Raiders-Destroyers rematch, uh, especially with the return of J.R. Taylor. Uh, but one thing you can't take against the Door County Destroyers is the fact that they just play as a team. They may not have the numbers, may not have the resources, but they do play well, and they are coached fantastically. So 
that's going to be a big plus for tonight's game. And let's talk about some of the coaching staff here. First, we'll introduce the Lincoln Way Patriots coaches. Uh, they're Head coach is Jim McClellan, their assistant head coach, Eddie Reek, the offensive coordinator, K.J. Franklin, the defensive coordinator, Andre Castle, the offensive line coach, Tom Cott, the defensive line coach, Josh, uh, Josh Manganiello, and Mike Brown, and the defensive backs coach, Mark Coglianessi, Jr. And for Door County, they are coached by Chris Knapp. He was the MSFL head coach of the year last year. Offensive coach is Cody Pennebecker, the defensive coach, Jeff Timmerman, line coach, Jeff Jacobson, and their quality control coach, Coach is Jesse Clark. So oftentimes, forget to get to those, so I want to make sure that we give those yeah. guys credit because they're the ones that uh, get these guys together and get them all organized out there. And for you, uh, you're affiliated with the Chicago Thunder, for those that don't know, and and it was uh, Lincoln Wade took you guys down three times this season. Yes, they but did. all in tight battles, no more than a touchdown in those games. Uh, we were actually the only team to hold Lincoln Way under uh, – four touchdowns and actually two games three touchdowns uh the chicago thunder offense struggled but that's not taking anything away from the lincoln way defense perry sanders is a standout if i think that's one of the number one keys of the game if door county can destroy can control perry sanders it's going to be a game but they have to control the line of scrimmage and that's the key with beating the lincoln way patriots they're going to score you can't stop it tony powell is a three-time mvp for a reason it's not anything to do just because he's fast he's a very good player so in order to stop the Lincoln Way Patriots you have to slow them down the only way to slow them down is to run the ball and that's one thing that Door County having seen them three times this year as I'm affiliated with the Racine Raiders that's one thing Door County is really good with is they are able to control that line of scrimmage they they uh, stuffed up the Racine running game in that championship game they forced Racine to beat them with the pass and the Raiders were unable to do so and actually end up dying by the passing sword as they threw two pick sixes late in that game and Door County they in the, in the game against the Raiders, they were able to put 8-9 in the box. I don't know that they're going to be able to do that against this against this Lincoln Way team. Well, if, if there's one knock on Tony Pollock, it's the fact that he can't the, the deep ball. He's not a deep ball thrower. Majority of his yards are yards after catch. So your opinion, can Door County limit the deep ball? Against the Raiders, they almost gave them the deep ball and shut down the run. It was almost like a conscious choice. I wasn't there. But in your opinion, is that something that Door County chose to do? Door County, they were able to, I think, uh, they, they went down to stop the run and to get pressure on the quarterback. That was their two goals. They were blitzing. When, if the Raiders weren't running, they were blitzing on with those 8-9 in the box. And Door County was willing to give Racine that deep ball, and Racine wasn't really able to connect on that. So, yeah, that was one thing that Door County went into that game, I think, with. If they can connect deep, then we'll, we'll hats off to them, but we're not going to let J.R. Taylor beat us with the, with the ground game. And I think that tonight that's going to be one of the keys of the game is if Tony Paul can beat us with the long ball, let him do it. Because that's not something he's known for. He's known if you give him a second, if you give him an, just a slight slot outside on the outside, he's going to take it and he's going to take the ball for a long way. Calvin Phillips, probably one of the most underestimated backs in the league because of Tony Powell. So there's not a lot of credence on him. If you don't gang tackle him, he is, go, he is going to run for over 200 yards. You must stop him. He is known... At least in the arena league, he played for the Chicago Eagles arena team. He put the ball on the ground. If he puts the ball on the ground, you have a chance again. Um, one big thing that we're not talking about tonight is the special teams winner the uh, from the Door County Detroiters is not here tonight. How bad does that affect them? Well, when you consider that in the game against Racine, they won 31-14. to Two of their two of their touchdowns were pick sixes that accounted for 13 points. So now you're down to it's an 18 to 14 game, and I believe he had uh, four field goals in that game, including his season long of about 45 yards. So Eric Natwick is a huge, huge asset to this Door County team. He's somebody that's a very consistent kicker, and he's somebody that can really, you know change the game with his punts and with his with his uh, field goals especially punting he had put 10 balls inside the 20 this year that's one thing that uh that i noticed in the racing game the conference championship game that really seemed to improve is he was getting them up there high and far and before he was kind of line drive kicking them against racine mm -hmm. and it seemed like he was getting the same distance and that's going to be part of the problem because chris muhammad for the uh number 24 for the lincoln way patriots 
is a very big threat at returner. And we're going to turn it over now for we're just about ready for the national anthem here at Hart Park. They're having a little problem with the uh, with the field mic as they get ready for the anthem here at Hart Park, and uh, they're going to work through that issue here momentarily, hopefully. By Brewskies uh, of Wauwatosa. Brewskies, uh, they were did they uh, they hosted the pregame tailgate, right? Where yes, they did. They hosted the tailgate, and they are also hosting the. Uh, all the refreshments at the refreshment stand. And it, a new thing that the MSFL tried. The, and we should say that this is the home field for the Milwaukee County Chargers. We want to give them credit. Scott Bolin, the owner and head coach, they they stepped up to, uh, they, ooh, they stepped up, sorry about that as they're testing the mic there. They stepped up to check, host check, this check. game and uh, did a fabulous job with all the pregame festivities. They partnered even with the uh, 102.9 The Hog here in the Milwaukee area too for some promotion for the game. We'd like to thank the 102.9 The Hog and Laura Ingram for coming out tonight. The Hog Girl, great mm -hmm. night. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale valley's fight o'er the ramparts we watch was so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting that we're about ready for football here at Hart Park in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. As you can see the Dora County Destroyers are in their white jerseys with blue numbers and black pants and the Lincoln Way Patriots come out in their gray jerseys with blue numbers outlined in white as the teams go out for the coin toss and I guess what are your three biggest keys to the game here Steve for, for, uh, for either team to come out on top here? Uh, my my three biggest keys for Door County, blitz. Got to get to Tony Powell, got to pressure Tony Powell, got to keep Tony Powell from getting to the outsides, got to contain. For Door County, or I'm sorry, for the Lincoln Way Patriots, forget about all the, what you're expected to do. You got to come out here, you have a job to do. Yes, you've lost three times before, but that's not what you have to think tonight. You have to maintain your patience. Their biggest problem is penalties. Uh, they make a lot of bad penalties. You cannot do that tonight. And lastly, for Door County, if you have to keep the game close, but you also have to maintain your, your composure. Uh, if you had a key player for tonight to pick two, one from each side, who would you pick? 
For Door County, uh, I think it comes down to Tamar Scott and whether he can uh, keep moving the ball on the ground and make uh, and make things easier for TJ Arndt. I see TJ Arndt in these big games. I see him more as you're looking for a game manager out of the quarterback for Door County. So Tamar Scott is going to have to carry the load like he did against the Racine Raiders. And for Lincoln Way, uh, you know, it comes down to, I think it ends up coming down to Steve Trudeau. Can Trudeau with the loss of Lexus Jackson, he's not going to be out there. They also uh, lost Javante Keys. Can Trudeau handle the load as the number one receiver and be able to pick up some yardage on the offensive side of the ball, and will they be able to move the ball with him? Linebacker Tyrell Webster of the Lincoln Way Patriots, a little bit overlooked with uh, the Greg, uh, Gary Young. I see he's back tonight. But also with Jeremiah Job were the big stars last year. However, I think Tyrell Webster has been the number one run stopper. If himself and Perry Sanders cannot control the uh, Door County run game, and one thing that impresses me about Door County, unlike so many semi-pro teams, if something doesn't work initially, they keep going. They know their game plan, they know who they are, and they stick true to that. And for uh, Lincoln Way, too, interesting to note that I saw the guy getting taped up on the, uh, on the trainer table. Guess who's back from California for tonight's game? Linebacker Gary Young is in, is in the building, is at the field, and he is suited up for Lincoln Way. I'm not sure how that works because he does play for the Southern Cal Coyotes, so I'm not sure that's something the league has to sort out. But tonight, he's here. Let's see what he can do. Was, so was defensive player of the year last year. Uh, and I know with the Raiders, two years ago, he was very good and a very big impact player. Yeah, I think he got the rookie of the year that year in the Mid-States yes, Football League. So, And then backed it up with defensive player of the year. So Door County will be kicking off first. It'll be A.J. Hamilton kicking from right to left. Back deep for Lincoln Way is Marzell Green. Also believe Anthony Hughes will be back there for the Lincoln Way Patriots. Just about ready to kick off the 2016 MSFL Championship game, the 17th championship game in MSFL history, and it will guarantee a new MSFL champion. Neither of these teams have won the title before. Lincoln Way has been there now three times. This is their third appearance, but they lost to the Racine threat and to the Racine Raiders. It's going to be picked up by Hughes at the 11-yard line. He's going to cut it outside towards the near numbers, gets outside, and that actually appears to be Muhammad, and Muhammad will step out of bounds at the 29-yard line for Lincoln Way. They'll have it first and 10 at their own 29 on a nice little return by Muhammad. This will actually be the first year since the very first year of the Mid-States Football League that we're guaranteed a new champion. Every other year, at least somebody who has won previously has been in the game. So this is the first year a new champion will be crowned. And they move the ball. It's going to be at the 30 for Lincoln Way. Tony Powell's completing 63% of his passes for 2,352 yards, 39 TDs, and just nine interceptions on the season for Powell. Powell will have Calvin Phillips to his left. One receiver to the left trips to the right for Powell. Powell now sends Phillips out of the backfield off to the left side. So twins on the left. Powell, quick pass, and he gets it out, and it's dropped in the flat. They're going to let play continue. Maybe it was a backward pass, and it's going to bring up a second down and 10 on the flip out to Calvin Phillips to the left side. Don, that's big right there because that is the, the number one aspect of the Lincoln Way Patriots game. Give it to your athletes and let your athletes go. Perhaps one of the least talked about thing with the Patriots since you hear so much about Tony Powell is the addition of the new line that they have. Matt Finnan from Nebraska, Michael Johnson from Xavier, Keith Haywood from the Chi City Ducks, Handoff goes to Calvin Phillips right up the gut, and Phillips is going to get it to the 37-yard line to pick up a seven before Donnie Johnson takes him down. And I'm finished off with their line. Leon Hill played Division Three football. This is an experienced offensive line. They haven't played long, a long time together, but with Jerome McClure, who has been a longtime Patriot, this is a great group here. 
Third and three now for Lincoln Way at the 37 yard line, just under a minute into this game. The handoff to Phillips, and it looks like he had trouble getting a handle on it, and Phillips goes nowhere as a couple white jerseys dive in. Donnie Johnson got in there late, I believe A.J. Hamilton as well, and they'll bring up a fourth down, and Lincoln Way will send out Rafael Alvarado to punt. Don, I gotta ask you, between number 99, Dylan Wapoos, and 72, Dan Hearing, do you think they stand up well against this Patriot offensive line? Those guys, Dylan Wapoos especially, I think will do well against this uh, against this Patriot offensive line. I think Herring is a very big run stopper there too, 6'3", 290, 6'3", 300 for Wapoos. You know, as a player who's been in this championship game eight different times, this is hard right now. This is where you're settling down. This is where the nerves are going. We're going to stand by by this kick. Andre Wilson back to receive. He's electric. Alvarado's punt is a driving punt. It's going to hit at the 15-yard line, and then it's going to take a Door County bounce back to the 14 where it'll be down. So Door County will have to start with it at their own 14-yard line. Good punt there by Alvarado as that one goes for 49 yards. And that's a win right there. When you could take a high offensive team such as the Patriots and slow them down and stop that first drive, perhaps gain a little momentum, that's a big victory for that destroyer defense. Door County does start with it though, deep in their own territory at their 14 yard line. We have 13-13 to play in the first quarter. So if you're superstitious and you're a fan of the Door County Destroyers, <laughs> uh, you might wanna look away for a second. No score in our Mid-States Football League championship game. Now we'll see what TJ Arndt and Tamar Scott can do. They'll be in the backfield for Door County. Looks like Door County is also going to have Travis Weber back there on the right side of Arndt. Tamar Scott on the left. They send two receivers off to the right and one receiver to the left. Arndt takes it. He rolls out looking to pass and through the hands of O'Robbie Fritch out in the flat at the 20-yard line. Incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. If you notice, they, they motioned out Tamar Scott and a linebacker did not go with them. So whether they've seen the play developing to the other side or Door County's just as giving you that look, you have to keep in, in mind that that man, Tamar Scott, is a first team all-star. He's going to break through tonight. That is a very smart practice by the Door County Destroyers. 58 degrees at kickoff, pretty much a still wind, although it's starting to pick up a little bit in Door County's face right now, going at about five miles an hour. Shotgun formation for Arndt. He has Tamar Scott off his right hip, trips to the left, one receiver to the right. Arndt looking, and it's tipped and then caught and then lost. And it's going to be recovered by Lincoln Way at around the 20-yard line. And on the catch was Matt Gajewski for Door County, but he ends up losing the football and Lincoln Way recovers at the 19 as our first turnover of the game. Don, the only game I was really able to see of the Door County Destroyers being on the south was the championship game and it seemed that these receivers did have a dropping problem. Is that something that you noticed in more than just that championship game having played them three times? They do have a problem with dropping the football. If you look at their stats, multiple drops on the season. And so it is a little bit of a problem, and it is a little bit wet out here today, too, still on that field. And that could be a problem for Door County. But as you mentioned, Calvin Phillips, he also has a problem with putting the ball on the ground as well. And this is something you can't do to the Patriots. You cannot make mistakes. So Tony Powell now with Phillips to his right. He has three receivers to the left and one receiver split out to the right side. Powell looks it over, he's ready to pass. Uh, pressure coming from the backside from Beachler. He hits Muhammad at the 10 yard line and Muhammad's brought down at the five yard line by A.J. Hamilton. That'll be a pickup of 14 yards and a first down, but we have an injured Patriot down on the field. There you see the blitzing ability of the Door County Destroyers. did get to the Lincoln Way Patriots very quickly, and that's what you're gonna see all night is that pressure. And a 14 yard pickup will make it a first and goal as they spot the ball down inside the five at the four yard line and trying to get a look at who the injured player is. They're taking a look at his right leg, right knee area. The training staff for Lincoln Way out there. Their tra head trainer, Dr. Josh Eldrin Camp, and their assistant trainer, Christian Richardson. 
And a lot of concern out there right now. Yeah, you hate to see this. We just played in our last game with the Lincoln White Patriots. One of our receivers uh, lost all feeling of his arms and legs for over three hours. You never want to see this at a, at a game. I saw a nine, but that could be two different players on their offensive line tonight. Keith Haywood, Matt Finnan, waiting to see if we can get a more clear grasp of who that is down on the ground for Lincoln Way. As with 12.48 to play in the first quarter, we have no score in the MSFL championship game here at Hart Park in Wauwatosa. Matt Finnan did have a problem with his left knee uh, at Julia Junior College where he played his junior uh, college football. And then he went on to Nebraska, played two seasons with Nebraska, and now it is his rookie year with the Lincoln Way Patriots. And I see that 69 Keith Haywood is out and walking around out there, so I believe this is Matt Finnan that is down on the ground for Lincoln Way. Having been an offensive lineman, there's so many things that can happen to you. You can get your legs rolled. Uh, there's so many that, you know, the trenches, that's where it is. That's where the battle is. We're going to see a great one inducted tonight in Ardre Jarrett uh, from the number 90 from the Racine Raiders. The trenches is where this warfare is at, and it is so easy uh, to get a leg tied up, turn an ankle, turn a knee. We hope the best uh, for whoever the Patriot is. They are clearing the field now. Uh, so not looking too good tonight, Don. Yeah, somebody pulled out a cell phone out of a plastic bag, and they have uh, applied something to his right leg below the knee. So uh, we are going to probably have an extended injury delay here just a couple minutes into the game, 12.48 to play in the first quarter. And we have a major injury out on the field right now uh, for the Lincoln Way Patriots, one of their offensive linemen. We believe it to be Matt Finnan that is down on the, on the turf here at Hart Park after uh, the first offensive play of the second drive for Lincoln Way of the game. They just recovered a fumble. Matt Gajewski caught a pass from TJ Arndt. Gajewski, that pass was tipped. Gajewski was able to still haul it in, and then he ended up losing it as he started to break up field, and it was recovered by the Lincoln Way Patriots. Matt, Matt Finnan wasn't I don't believe was an all-star this year uh, and I think that was a kind of a mistake by the league with offensive linemen you're often picked over uh, nobody really knows who you are so it's a thankless position having played it for 18 years at this level uh, but you never want to see this and that tackle position especially left tackle you've seen it many many years you guys were blessed with great tackles uh, Dustin is one one that comes to mind that's a huge loss, especially for a running quarterback as such as Tony Powell. And that's one of the areas where I don't think Lincoln Way has a whole lot of depth, and you would know that more than more than I, but it's uh, looking at their roster, it, it's, not a, uh, it's not in a position where they seem to have a, uh, a whole lot of players that could fill in there. No, what they're probably going to do is they're going to probably take uh, Mello Wood, the center, uh, move him out. I'm sorry, Keith Haywood. Mello Wood is his nickname. Uh, is what I know him by, but they're probably going to take Keith Haywood, move him out to tackle, and they're going to probably use their center, Colton, who's played center with them all year, move him to center. So they're probably going to do a player swap, would make the most sense. And that's Colton Buell Rutz. Yes, sir. As they still have uh, Finnan on the ground down at the 28 yard line. And it was a blitz from Brian Beachler coming from that backside and Beachler almost got to Tony Powell. Powell just able to get that pass off that resulted in a first down uh, with that pressure coming from the backside. Beachler was able to get around Finnan and we're not sure if it's because of uh, because that Finnan uh, went down beforehand or if uh, it was caused by Beachler kind of getting a step around him but uh, we have a delay here at Hart Park early on in the Mid-States Football League Championship game as they are awaiting um, emergency medical personnel to come. And there's a fire station just behind us here at Hart Park. So they don't have a great distance to go, just a few blocks, although a lot of construction around Hart Park here in Wauwatosa, which uh, could delay them as they have to uh, take in a, an alternate route to, uh, to get here from maybe the straight route they'd normally have from the fire station here in Wauwatosa. 
and hopefully the train does not come. That is a long train. Uh, we were here a few years ago. There was an incident where an ambulance had to come, and you're looking at 45 minutes uh, we waited for somebody with a bad leg. And, yeah, there are railroad tracks that go by Hart Park here to our north. There's a set of railroad tracks, and they are well-used uh, tracks here in Wauwatosa. As uh, I play softball a lot of times, right behind us uh, off the football field, they have a softball diamond. This is considered the jewel of Wauwatosa. It's in... Uh, it's in, in the city center, essentially, what you would consider potentially a downtown area. They call it Tosa Village here, and it's a uh, it's a uh, highly populated area with a lot of a uh, lot of commercial uh, ventures, enterprises here. Earlier today, during the Michigan Wisconsin game, by the way, congratulations to your Wolverines. Although I'm very happy with uh, the what what Wisconsin put out there today, then didn't, didn't get blown out yeah. like a lot of pundits thought they would, but. Uh, we could hear folks from a, another bar yes. uh, across the street cheering, and you could tell there was an extra loud cheer for the Wisconsin touchdown, and that, yeah. set the, that set the tone for when I heard cheering. I knew whether it was Wisconsin doing something well or Michigan because there was still a good cheer from over there when Michigan uh, did, it, did something well too. So we hear the sirens yeah. now, so it should just be a matter of moments before uh, we get the uh, – get the EMS services here to attend to the injured player for the Lincoln Way Patriots as we're in a bit of an extended delay right off the bat here in the MSFL championship game and uh, you talked that uh, Colton Buell Rutz was their was their center um, Steve for much of the season and then Haywood came in and, and took over that role and so they'll probably flip Haywood to the outside and Buell Rutz to center. How does that affect things though on an offensive line having been an offensive lineman or even for a quarterback now having to try and take snaps from a different center? Well Haywood was brought in from the Shy City Ducks. Uh, he, he's a he's a next level athlete. He's he's far bigger than Colton. He stands probably five inches taller and weighs about five, 45 pounds more pounds he's aggressive Colton is a sh is a shorter person probably around 510 270 probably around 265 so he's given up a lot of that weight um, what he does probably do not as great as Haywood is snapping you're gonna see a big difference in in the long snapping in Colton than you did with Haywood however Colton does have a great heart he recovers well uh, he covers the field well he goes side to side probably better than Haywood and he also has a good uh, low game, cuts without setting up a chop block. Now as a player too, we've had a delay that's probably been about 10 to 12 minutes on the clock already. You've been warmed up. This is a huge game that you're out here. For Lincoln Way, they just got a huge turnover. They're down on the, down on the Door County four yard line. How does this affect you as a, as a player to have this kind of delay? Well, I think you see Door County doing the right thing. And, and, and again, it's it's easier for them because it's not one of their players. But you see them out there throwing the ball. You see them congregating. You see them talking to one another, moving around. Lincoln Way is kind of in one spot. It's their momentum that's taken. They have to think that they lost a Division One football player. So that sits in your mind. You see somebody going on in a stretch. It's never good for anybody at this level. So um, I think... It doesn't play advantage for either. You never want to say an injury is an advantage, but it seems like Door County, probably because they're used to playing with less players with only 31, 32 on the roster, it may, they are doing the right thing right now. And it looks like they have the right calf of Finnan secured. They secured it with, uh, with uh, something out down there. So uh, with a splint of some sort, and now the EMS personnel are going to attend to him and get him to a local hospital. Probably, I would imagine, they'll probably take him to Freightert. That is the uh, closest hospital to us, just a few minutes away from here, uh, to get him uh, emergency or to get him attention. And uh, Freightert, a, a very well-known, nationally recognized hospital in the Milwaukee area. It's a huge complex. It's part of the Milwaukee Medical Complex that includes the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin over there as well. It's one of those things where you 
can see it from some of the hills in Milwaukee, and you just, if you're not used to what it is, you're like, what is this village that's, uh, that's over here in the middle of nowhere? And uh, so very, uh, very good medical services available at Freighter for Matt Finnan is that's uh, likely where, where they will take him. That is the closest facility to where we're located here at Hart Park in Wauwatosa. Well, Don, I'm a fib, so I don't have the knowledge you have geographically. Uh, but, you know, this is one of the things at this level. If you want to be I, not so much an elite team, but if you want to be a real team, you have to have a training uh, personnel. You have to have a training staff. You guys have a very good tra staff with you. Uh, it's one of the things that I could say with the Thunder. One of the big upgrades we've had over the last few years is that training staff. Uh, like I said, we had a, per uh, a player who lost all feeling. And thank goodness we had that staff to fill in. So Lincoln Way has a very good uh, doctor that can step in. I mean, this is this is a stressful situation here right now. And in Wisconsin, we're very fortunate too, as you know, the Racine Raiders have long offered uh, have long offered. Um, uh, health insurance to players and the Racine Threat, another team in the league, were able to uh, do that as well as there is a uh as there is a there is something in there is something in Wisconsin where teams or, or organizations can get onto a um, kind of a group type of health plan and we're able to uh, and we're able to get onto that so for for those teams so that's something that i know other teams struggle with because laws are are different in other states i know that illinois is not as liberal in in offering no. those types of things to uh to large groups as well but um that's something that is available to some teams here in in, in the wisconsin area as well but of course lincoln way down in down in illinois uh you know it, this is one of those things where we call it for the love of the game and want to make sure everybody walks away safely so they can go to work on Monday and and it's not going to cost them anything out of pocket and uh, unfortunately we have this uh, this injury a, a right leg injury to Matt Finnan from the Lincoln Way Patriots. It's far different in Illinois like you mentioned before and one thing I'd like to tell all players out there if you have a team in Illinois that's telling you they have workman's comp or liability insurance that's not true uh, due to the laws in Illinois that you cannot do it. There is some instances where perhaps a 501c3 may be able to do that, uh, but those are very few and far between. So if you are playing this game, I recommend that you do pick up an Affleck insurance. I had it all through my 18 years of playing. Uh, I was an Affleck 18 years ago in 1993 that was not out there. But there are, uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be in a union. I had great insurance, but I still picked up a liability po policy. Cost you 20 bucks a month. This is why you do it. And if you are playing in Illinois and not in Wisconsin, your team does not offer it. Uh, we don't want to preach to you, but this is something you may want to think about. And Steve, uh, why don't we touch on this a little bit while we uh, while we wait for them to uh, to attend to uh, Matt Finnan here. Um, and I talked to Rob Feltner. We'll play that at halftime if we mm -hmm. have some time. But I know you've been big into recruiting teams for the Mid States Football League. What are the benefits for if somebody's out there and they're the owner of a team or a player on a team and they, they see, want something better for their team, what are the benefits for a team to come to the Mid-States Football League? Well, I think the, num the number one benefit that you can see in this league opposed to many other leagues is that uh, one of the things that we can tout is that it's one schedule. Every owner votes on that schedule. You're presented three different schedules. You vote on it and you stay that schedule. Another benefit is there is no owner of this league. The owners of this league are the teams. Uh, when I talk to some of these teams and some of the team, some of the players have come, or I'm sorry, some of the teams have come from other leagues like the GFL. And one of the main things I told them is, look, we're not trying to take over your league. We're asking you to come here and take over ours. You can come in here and you can develop two leagues. One of the things we're doing here this year is two different divisions. Uh, a lot of people have had a lot of questions about that. We are going to be holding a webinar to kind of explain what those two divisions are. But the thought of one thing is one thing that we've done wrong in the Mid-States Football League, as you know, having been with the Racing Raiders, and myself being with the Chicago Thunder, four championships in this league, uh, sometimes teams get lost in the shuffle. And we lose great ideas. We lose great uh, just people participating in our league. And that's something we never want to do again. So we've started the second division with teams and, and here's the big misconception you're going to hear around the league. 
There's a, that second division is a lower division. It's not. It's a division for teams that don't have the resources of the Racing Raiders. The 26 years of Chicago Thunder. Um, the 14 years of the Leiden Lions. It's teams that need to learn this. This is something that we offer with this league. We're going to do a much better job of helping everybody along. I don't want to say no child left behind because as an educator, <laughs> I hate it. But that's kind of what we're doing. No league left behind anymore. We're not going to take teams that have folded multiple times. We're not going to take teams that don't have the resources to make it through a year. But we are going to take teams that we normally may have not given the chance. This year, huge teams in Chicago. I'm asking my Wisconsin brothers of football to step up, try to get some teams. We have the Chicago Chaos, three-time champion of the GFL. The Chicago Chaos, reigning champion of the GFL. We've got the Zion Atomic Swarm out of uh, Lake County. Has been a really good, dominant Lake County team since the Lake County Chiefs, which RJ Jarrett is from, and many Raiders actually uh, are from the Lake County Chiefs. And then we have from the first time from Bloomington, the uh, Bloomington Jets. So we'd like to welcome them aboard too. No other team in Bloomington. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for them to start that second league, make a name for themselves, and come up. It hasn't been a good Bloomington team since the Mid-State Steel. Probably in 2009 was their big year. And with Bloomington, they were actually a nine-man team, were they not? And they're going to try yeah. and step up to yeah. 11 because they've seen like the chaos and some of those GFL Gridiron Football League teams do that successfully? Absolutely. So they've been, uh, they've been in the uh, eight-man football league for over six years. Uh, they know how to recruit. They're actually one of the very fortunate teams that had Bloomington go to them. A uh, small town right outside Bloomington say, hey, we want you to play here. Our facilities are free to you. Um, having being, being a GM now, stepping up from the player role to the GM role, I know how expensive that is. That gives them a great advantage. Uh, they know how to do it. They know how to recruit. Sorry, just uh, pausing a moment is they, for uh, Matt Finnan. Yeah. As they get mad up on the uh, stretcher here at Hart Park. Uh, we're just getting a message from our on-field reporter. Um, unfortunately, it seems like uh, from everything we're hearing from the field, it is a broken leg for Matt Fennin. And that's, uh, that's unfortunate. You see uh, on the video feed here, Door County players, Lincoln Way players all going out there to show their support for Matt Finn. And just to recap where we're at right now, 12.48 to play in the first quarter of the 2016 Mid-States Football League Championship game. And Matt Finnan went down, and uh, we were getting word from the field that it is a broken leg for Matt Finnan, right leg, broken right leg for Matt Finnan. But how we got here, uh, Lincoln Way got the uh, ball first. They went three and out. Door County on their second offensive play. Pass was tipped but completed to Matt Gajewski. Gajewski, as he was moving upfield, lost the football at around the 20-yard line. It was pounced on by the Patriots, and they then completed a 14-yard pass or 15-yard pass down to the 4-yard line, and they'll have a first and goal at the Door County 4-yard line with 12.48 to play in the first quarter, no score. So that's where we're at and how we got there right now, and the... Uh, EMS personnel are going to uh, wheel Matt Finnan off the field here at Hart Park in Wauwatosa and we'll be ready to get started in just a few minutes but our uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the former Nebraska offensive lineman Matt Finnan and that just shows you the quality of players that that participate here in the Mid-States Football League as you know the Racine Raiders had J.R. Mm -hmm. Taylor Eastern Illinois University Matt Finnan Nebraska a, a lot of uh, D1 D2 uh, D3 players that participate in this league yeah we're we're fortunate too as the Chicago Thunder uh, kind of unheard of at this level Ryan O'Neill was a Ivy League Division One player from Dartmouth well, because uh, the smart guys don't play this level. No, right? <laughs> no, no. You hear a lot about the and uh, you hear a lot about the head damage, but yeah, Dartmouth, and we've actually have a guy from Harvard next year coming to play linebacker for the Chicago Thunder. So, it is out there. Um, that one thing I want to ask you: you've been here many more times than myself. What is your opinion in instead of just starting this game, giving these teams time to warm up again? We've been in the delay for over 15 minutes. Yeah, and I mean, I think you know. 
it, it's one of those things where where I think players have to take that responsibility to themselves, though, as well. I mean, you notice that the Door County stayed warming up as on the sidelines too, and players have to be smart and, and watch out for themselves to some extent, I think, as well. Well, so, here, here we get a good chance to see how uh, how those two teams have uh, remained. Are they ready? Lincoln Way will have two receivers each way. Bunch just off the line for Powell. Powell has Calvin Phillips to his left. A first and goal from the four as play resumes following the Matt Finnan injury. And Powell looking to throw to his right, backing up, moving to his left, spins in trouble and throws it up and away. And one of his receivers got fairly close to it uh, towards the sideline. Some folks uh, yelling for a intentional grounding, but a receiver did get within range for the Lincoln Way Patriots as he tossed that up way high and getting close to it was Dougie Williams, one of their receivers. And that did get past the original line of scrimmage. Uh, one thing that many of you don't know out there is Tony Powell did have bruised ribs. He is recovering, uh, perhaps cracked ribs. So he is nursing that injury. Ribs are something that don't heal uh, in a month, two months, it takes time. Muhammad one-on-one -on -one with Holbert to the right. They pitch to Philbert. Phillips going to the left and Phillips taken bound by Chris LeClue. That is going to be a loss of two yards back to the six yard line and it'll bring up a third and goal from the six. Don, do you find it interesting that they went right to that left side which Matt Finnan uh, is gone from now? Yeah, to see, I guess, to see what they have over there. Maybe they think they have a better chance against LeClue over there. Maybe not as fast as Donnie Johnson on the other side of the field. And is that is that indeed Haywood that moved over to the left side? Actually, it looks like they have Michael Johnson over on the left side. Looks like uh, we'll try and get the center. Throws it up, nearly intercepted in the end zone. Jake Hall almost came down with it, and it'll bring up a uh, fourth and goal from the six. And it looks like Rafael Alvarado will come out to try and put Lincoln Way up three zip with 11:24 to play in our first quarter. Don, this kid's the real deal. Uh, it seemed to only come to the big games this year, but he is an absolute lock at 40 yards. Uh, and I seen him kick a 52-yarder myself. And he was uh, he was a member of the Raiders early on last season, and then uh, he got left. And when the Raiders went to play in Iowa, he missed the bus, Not and good. then ended up just dropping from the team. So Alvarado is able to punch it through, and the field goal from. Uh, ends up going in and it's three zip in favor of Lincoln Way. They draw first blood with 11-21 to play in our first quarter. That's a win, Don, if you're the Door County Destroyers. I know you gave up three, but you fumble that close and you, you're going against the number one offense in the Mid-States Football League. That's a win. So here we are. Hart Park, Mid-State Football League Championship action. Lincoln Way takes the lead three to nothing with 11.21 left in the game. Brought to you by Brewskies of Wauwatosa. Brewskies, a popular establishment here in the Milwaukee area. They sponsor a lot of rec sports teams as well. One thing I'd like to call out tonight, beautiful crowd here at the Mid-State Football League. Look like it's well attended. Still more people, a lot of people congregating at the beer tent as usual and uh, looks like a great game tonight beautiful weather was raining all day but it's certainly cleared up and looks like a great night Alvarado will kick off for Lincoln Way and back deep for Door County it is Andre Wilson on the far side of the field and Junior Blucher I believe is on the near side awaiting the Alvarado kick they're just inside the 10 yard line and watching in pre-game warm-ups, that was about where Alvarado's distance was on kickoffs. Alvarado approaches, line drive kick, and this one is going to go into the end zone and out the back of the end zone, so Alvarado may be just toying around during the uh, pre-game warm-ups because he didn't get anything further than about the eight yard line. So Door County will start with it first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. They trail Lincoln Way three zip, a turnover. Lincoln Way turned into three points to draw first blood in this MSFL championship game. 
So now as Miss Q put Door County behind the eight ball here a little bit, but they were able to at least stall Lincoln Way. See what they can do on offense here. They only had a chance to run two plays on that initial drive as they put two receivers out to the left and two to the right. In motion is Gajewski, the handoff to Tamar Scott. Scott right up the gut, and he is going to get tied up and dropped down by, I believe that's Perry Sanders, it is. Tamar Scott picks up two on the run, and now to make it three now, and it'll be a second down and seven. And that's what you have to do if you're Door County. You already had a receiver fumble the ball, you have to wear down Perry Sanders. Same formation, this time aren't looking to pass, looking to his left the whole time while Robbie Fritch up at the 32 yard line steps out of bounds, a pickup of nine and a first down, their first of the game for Door County. Don, how, do you, how big do you think that is coming off of a, a fumble and a first, first down, seeing that you only had two, two possessions the last time? Well, Arndt went to Will Robbie Fritch, who is probably their closest thing to a possession receiver and sure hands on the team. Hand off to Tamar Scott. Scott trying to pick his way just off over left guard. And Tamar Scott gets up to the 35 yard line, a pick up a three on the play. And that's Perry Sanders getting off the pile again. So Sanders with his second tackle of the game. No huddle offense here for Door County as they pick up the pace. Twin receivers each way for TJ Arndt. Arndt looking to pass, looking middle of the field, under pressure, spins out of it, and Arndt rolling to his left, throwing to the sideline, and it's incomplete. Brian Beachler, their safety with a nice catch on the sideline, but it's going to be an incomplete pass and bring up a third down and six for Door County. Smart play by TJ, not trying to force anything. You're still within three first quarter. You don't want to push anything right now. You want to take what they give you. And a lot of quarterbacks at this level will try to force the ball, and that's where you get so many multiple interception games at this level of play. And aren't with 15 interceptions on the season, 12 of those came against the other two Northern Conference playoff teams. So uh, he's had some problems throwing picks in, against tough competition. Justin Baker in motion, slot left to the right side. Aren't looking to pass, going deep. He's looking for Wilson, overthrows Wilson. Picked. It's gonna be picked off back at the 30 yard line and it's grabbed and pitched now. And with it is Barksdale. Barksdale down the far sideline. Barksdale at midfield, cuts across the field. Legs. Barksdale, the 40. Barksdale, 35, cuts outside. The outside numbers, 30, 25, 20. Barksdale with blockers in front of him, down to the five, and Barksdale this into the end back. zone. But as you said, there were flags on the play. This is coming back. I think he got blocked in the back. So nearly a 70 yard interception return. Door County players are already down on their uh, haunches there as they're a little worn out. Ball, face mask, 79 white on the return. Ooh. Touchdown is good. Ooh. They missed a the holding there. Wow, so it's gonna be a touchdown for Door County, a pick six for Door County on the pitch. Barksdale gets credit with the score and Door and uh, Lincoln Way has opened up a nine zip lead with 9.38 to play. That's interesting, they missed multiple holdings and a block in the back on that play. Whenever time you see that happening on an interception, that's gonna happen, but uh, Good, good return by Barksdale. All around athlete right there. So Alvarado comes on to try and make it a 10 zip game. So Door County turnovers have resulted in all 10 points for Lincoln Way. I think Door County thought it was coming back too. And the kick is up and it is good. And it's a 10 zero lead for Lincoln Way with 9.38 to play. Here now, in the first quarter. Now as a player, Don, one thing you gotta think about is everybody was calling for you to get blown out. You cannot let that enter your head. You have to maintain your composure. If you're Door County, you gotta stick to the basics. You gotta go back to what got you here, and that's the running game and the short game. You cannot go deep on this team. So that is essential. You have to stay with Grachu here. Do not try to become something you're not. 
Don't go for that long ball if that's not who you are. Stay who you are. Main, maintain as close as you can to be true to who you are. Don't get upset over calls. They're going to miss them. This is semi-pro and the refs are semi-pro. You have to remember that as a player, you've got to stay composed right now. This is key. The next possession will be your most important of the year. You have to do something in offense. You have to move the ball. Your defense has done a good job in the limited time they've been out there. So as an offense, you have to do something. If you punt it, that's fine. You cannot turn over the ball again at this time. So it was Chris Muhammad with his fourth interception of the year before he pitched that one off to Greg Barksdale to take it the 70 yards to pay dirt. Alvarado on to kick off. And Alvarado, a little bit shorter of a kick. Wilson goes back, he bobbles it at the goal line. He picks it up and brings it out. Wilson the 10, the 15, cuts it towards the near side, but he's held on to and cannot get away from a Lincoln Way defender on the ground. It'll be first and 10 at the 15, and the tackle for Lincoln Way was made by Gary Young. So Gary Young in from California and ends up uh, getting the tackle and now slow to get up. And this would be huge for Dora County if Andre Wilson is down. He's their one big play receiver and he has his helmet off and is up and off under his own power now. So as you said, Lincoln Way, uh, Door County, they need to respond here. They'll have it first and 10, but all the way back at their own 16, as that's uh, been about their average starting field position in this game right now. And that's one thing that probably Lincoln Way has approved most this year, besides bringing in multiple big time players, is their return, their return coverage. Uh, being a Raider last year, you saw what the Raiders were able to do to them on return game. Two receivers each way for Arndt. In motion is Gajewski, slot right to the left. The handoff goes to Tamar Scott. Scott tries the right side, and he'll get up to the 20 yard line, a gain of four, and it'll be second down and six for Door County with 9.15 to play. In our first quarter, they trail 10 zip. And that's one big thing you gotta remember is there's nothing wrong with a four yard gain. You can't go for it all in one time. You cannot, you cannot there's no possible way you can score 10 points. You gotta hit them, you gotta slow down this game. Receiver to the right, three receivers to the left for Arndt. Off his right hip is Tamar Scott. Takes it, looking to pass, throwing, looking for Robbie Fritch, and will Robbie Fritch makes the catch up around the 27 yard line before he's driven to the ground on the tackle, Antoine Jones. That'll be a pickup of seven, just enough for a first down. Don, and that's what you're giving you. They're giving you that short gain. They're letting you get it. Uh, they, they have enough confidence in their defensive line to make those tackles. And that's what you got to keep going with. Lincoln Way, Chris Muhammad, is, he played arena ball for a reason with the Chicago Eagles. He's very good. Do not test that man. Baker split out to the right. Two receivers out to the right. Well, Robbie Fritch also out there. I formation backfield behind Arndt. The handoff goes to Tamar Scott, and Scott will get across the 30 to the 31 yard line before he is brought down on the play by Charles Hardy along with Tyrell Webster. One thing we haven't spoken about is safety number 22, Frank Redding filling in for Deterio Harrington who was suspended for the year. This is the big pickup for the Linkway Patriots. The, the man has set his time, two years set behind him. He is a better player. I think he's a definite improvement if they try to test him, he is just as capable as Muhammad. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. I formation backfield again behind Arndt. The handoff to Weber, the fullback, and Weber keeps that pile moving across the 35 up to the 36 yard line. It'll be a pickup of five and leave Door County with a third and one. And Weber was a defensive tackle that they just started using as a fullback in the last few games. There it is, that's the key. That This is what's gonna help Door County get back in this game. Only down by 10, you're not too far out. Under seven minutes to play in our opening quarter. Gajewski checks in as Weber comes out on a third down and short ball at the 36 yard line of Door County. Turnovers have hurt Door County in this one. That's how Lincoln Way has gotten all 10 points. A pick six 
and then in inter a fumble they turned into a, t a field goal. Tamar Scott breaks it off to the right side and Tamar Scott will get a first down as he runs over James Pierce and picks up a couple of yards. Smart play, Don, they saw that linebacker blitz coming, they delayed the handoff, moved it to the right side, ran that, delayed that by not handing off right away and going through the middle, they avoided that blitz and got to the outside. Door County, as you said, it's okay to get those four yards a rush. They've gotten three, four, 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 and five yards per carry thus far in the game. Despite being down 10 zip, two receivers left, one to the right again for Arndt. He's under center. Arndt gives to Tamar Scott. Tamar Scott in that middle, and he's just going to get tied up there. Nowhere to go on that play. Getting into, uh, getting into him there looked to be Jerome Connor first for Lincoln Way. And it's only a, a one yard game, but that's something they have to realize is that you have to wear down this defense. That offense is fantastic of the Lincoln Way Patriots. They will get unraveled. They're not gonna go three and out or field goal every time. You have to wear down this defense. 520 to play in our opening quarter. Aren't under center again, two receivers right, one to the left. That's where Robbie Fritch is possession receiver to the left. Arndt fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, throwing towards the sideline and throwing high for the intended receiver, Alex Whitney. It'll bring up a third down and nine for Door County. That's a flag against the Lincoln oh. Way Patriots. The initial signal, offsides. So free five yards here for Door County as we await. Croachment on the defense, number 50. Five yards, replay that out. So free five yards on the offsides for Lincoln Way. It'll make it a second down and four now for Door County, ball up at the 46 yard line. Looks like High good. formation backfield for Door County here. Two receivers left, one to the right. On second and four, handoff to Tamar Scott. And Scott powers his way through initially, pounds the ball on the ground because he thought he was going to have more, but it was Tyrell Webster that ran that he ran into, and Webster able to drop him about a yard short. And that's one of the best in the game right there, Tyrell Webster. I talked about it on the uh, Stephen Joe show, uh, the MSFL radio show. Often that is a man that is underappreciated. That guy is a big hitter. So a third and one for Door County. They have the backfield of Travis Weber and Tamar Scott. Two receivers right, one to the left, aren't under center. The handoff to Tamar Scott, and Scott is going to come up just a little bit short. Needs to get to midfield and think it's going to bring up a fourth down here for Door County, and it'll be decision time early on for the Destroyers. Scott? Where are they going to spot that? They're, well, they're, they're spotting it back to the one the uh, far line judge is saying back at the original line of scrimmage, but now they set it forward a little bit and they say fourth down and this other, the far side line judge thinks that uh, thinks that they maybe, uh, he was saying they should have spotted it further back, but he's gonna lose that argument. It's inches, fourth and inches in Door County has their offense out on the field. Now Don, I'm eyesight challenged, but is the uh, Southern Cal Coyotes Gary Young out there? On this play, well, he had the, uh, he did have one tackle on the special teams play. And yeah, he's out there. He's at the left outside linebacker position right now. Is it timeout? No, they, uh, I think they're going to, uh, talking about when they should wind the clock in. And now they do 335 to play here in our first quarter. A big play for Door County who trails 10 zip to Lincoln Way. Fourth and inches at midfield. Two receivers right, one to the left. Arndt Off tries flag. to charge forward. Looks like he got it, but a flag does come out from the near side line judge. He did get it, but it looks like it's going to be against Door County. Oh, the judge that no. threw it. No, he's pointing Lincoln Way's way, so You're I think correct. they'll take the penalty here. You're correct. Got Croachman on the defense. Five yards, first stop. So another penalty against Lincoln Way. That's their second for 10 yards, and it gives Door County 
the first down. The fifth first down of the game for the Door County Destroyers. Their first time in Lincoln Way territory. They have it first and 10 at the Lincoln Way 45 yard line as they're trying to make up some ground. They trail 10 zip with 3.05 to play in our opening quarter. Arndt in the shotgun, he's flanked by backs. Two receivers left, one to the right for Arndt. Arndt looking to pass. Arndt coming, hitting Baker, coming out of the backfield and Baker is taken down at the 39 yard line, steps out of bounds and uh, coming in a little bit late was Calvin Akins. no flag on the play, but it'll be good enough for, no, it'll be a, good enough for a six yard gain, second down and four. And here we go with that hurry up. They're, they're moving the ball. They're, Increasing that tempo. Two receivers each way this time for Arndt. Tamar Scott off his right hip. Ball at the 39 yard line of Door County. Arndt throwing out to the right side, hits Gajewski. And Gajewski is dropped for nearly no gain. The tackle made by Alex Fuller for Lincoln Way. Make it a gain of one on the play. And it will be a third down and three for Door County. And here we go, they're back at it again. Aren't looking to pass and flag we have a flag like that Lincoln comes Way. out. And Door County signaling that it's against Lincoln Way. Did they have too many out there? Were they trying to substitute? Tamar Scott saying Lincoln Way penalty. Here we go. We have a legal substitution on the defense. 12 men at the field prior to the snap, five yards. So TJ Arndt pulling a little bit of Aaron Rodgers on that play to get a five yard penalty and another first down for Door County. Third penalty for 15 yards for Lincoln Way. And that is one of the Achilles heels for this Patriots team. They do get a lot of flags, Steve. Yeah, that's something we spoke about at the beginning of the game is they aren't as disciplined as a team that is undefeated should be. And another thing we talked about is the great coaching. And I'm sure this is something they noticed and went after. Andre Wilson back out on the field for Door County. That's good to see. He was slow to get off after returning the kickoff to start this drive. Matt Gajewski in motion, slot right to the left. Arndt gives off to Tamar Scott. Scott tries to power his way through that line, but Perry Sanders grabbed a hold of him and slowed him up, and he ends up getting three yards on the carry. It'll be second down and seven for Door County at the Lincoln Way 30-yard line. Don, here's where your medal is tested if you're a defensive lineman or linebacker for the Patriots with this tempo and the constant running. Aren't quick pass, hits Baker in the flat. Baker slips a tackle at the 30, and then Baker is gonna be spun around and taken down at the 26 yard line, a pickup of four on the pass play and on the tackle, look to be Jeremiah Job for Lincoln Way. Don, so, you know what's starting to loom large here is the missing kicker. Yeah, Eric Natwick, they'd be very close to his range. He's at a wedding, unable to make tonight's game. Looks like Dora County, or it looks like Lincoln Wade had gone off sides again, but no flag. Tamar Scott is dropped by Arlander Wade with well, a gain of one, and it'll be a third down and two for Dora County with 45 seconds to play in the first quarter. Great job by the Lincoln Way Patriots linebackers to recover. It looked like he initially had that hole and would get that first. Uh, Moved well, followed the running back, and made that tackle. They're going for it again. Again, without that kicker, uh, they're forced to do things maybe they wouldn't do normally. And check that fourth and two at the 25-yard line. Aren't flanked by backs. Aren't takes it. No, that's Gajewski out of the it. Wildcat, and Gajewski plows his way through the right side of the line. Jeremiah Job again on the tackle for Lincoln Way. And it's going to be enough for a first down. Gajewski with the run. And he picks up three yards on the play. And that may bring us to the end of the first quarter. And it does. So Door County, they have had the ball for nine minutes and 38 seconds on this drive. That's when they took over here, Steve. And uh, this first quarter the stoppage actually kind of hurting them a little bit as they've, they're pounding it away yeah. at that Lincoln Way uh, line. And just what you said they need to do, that's what Door County has buckled down and done thus far. And this, and again, that's something that we said in the beginning was one of the very big keys of this game is slow it down. Just like a prize fighter, when you're going against somebody that can move, 
you hit them with those body shots and keep slowing them down, keep slowing them down, keep taking the shots to the body. Yeah, they're not impressive, but they slow down the team. They take away that will. They take away that endurance and that speed advantage that they have. This is something that Door County has to focus on. They've got to keep them off the field. And that's something that Door County has done all season. They've trailed in a lot of games this year, including two weeks ago against Racine. They were down 14 zip. They're able to pull to within 14-6 at the end of the uh, first half. And then they just ended up rattling off 25 unanswered points to win the game. And Door County has done that on a few occasions this year where it looked like they were down and out early against the Milwaukee County Chargers that happened. And then they were able to be able to pull away with the victory against the Chargers in one of those games as well. And same with against Muskego. Muskego jumped out to a quick start in one of the games against Door County and Door County was able to take those take those blows and end up uh, returning them back and and being able to finally get the uh, uh, KO head punch later on. So Door County with a first and ten ball at the 22 yard line of Lincoln Way. Door County leads 10 zip in our 2016 Mid States Football League Championship game. T.J. Arn is going to go under center, I formation backfield. He's audibly. Weber and Scott in the backfield behind Arndt. He has one receiver to the right, two to the left. Wilson one-on-one -on -one with Fuller on the right side. Handoff goes to Tamar Scott, and Scott tries the right side. Scott keeps that body moving. Arlander Wade eventually brings him down after a gain of two, and it'll be a second down and eight for Door County at the 20-yard line. One of the unfortunate things about this game is this is normally where you'd have a guaranteed three had they had their punter, but or I'm sorry, their field goal kicker. Unfortunately, they don't have that, so they're almost forced to go for that touchdown, that seven. And I was talking to uh, I was talking to one of their owners uh, before the game, and he said, "Yeah, we're probably going for two tonight, the whole time. Anytime we score." Well, Robbie Fritch, along with Baker, out to the left side, I formation backfield behind Arndt. That's Weber and Scott, one receiver to the right. Arndt fakes the handoff, looking for the end zone for Baker in the corner, and Baker just can't come down with it. It'll bring up a third down and eight. Baker with a chance at that one, but Arndt threw it. Didn't have enough loft on that one for what he was trying to do there, Steve. You wonder, too, if after you've given up a pick, if, if that goes in your head. You know, being a quarterback, you have to be a gunslinger. Very short memory, and you can't remember these things. He did have them open. He had he had a, a, at least two yards in between him and the defender. That's interesting. T.J. Arndt has probably averaged about 25 passes a game on the season, and already they've tossed the ball 11 times here in the first quarter plus about a minute. So it'll be a third and eight for Door County as they huddle all the way back beyond the 40-yard line. Line of scrimmage is the 20. In four down territory in all likelihood without Eric Natwick, the special teams player of the year in the league, available to Door County tonight. Shotgun formation for Arndt. He has Scott off his right hip. Three receivers left, one to the right, uh -oh. and it's a free play. Free play. Arndt with a free play, throwing Got it up him. for Wilson. That's another penalty. And throws it too far. And Fuller asking for, I think, a pass interference penalty against Fuller Wilson. Fuller got away with one. That was, hold, that was defensive holding all the way. And so free five yards here again for Door County, although Arndt has his hands by his side. Maybe there was no flag. They're going to say no. Terrible call, guys. They pick that one up, and Door County needs to regroup here. They have a fourth down and eight now. Ball at the Lincoln Way 20-yard line. And 14.01 to play in our first half. Why was that picked up? No, no, no explanation. Lincoln Way leads 10 zip. Here's a big one again for Door County. Three receivers left. Wilson all alone on the right side against Fuller. Arndt takes the snap. Quick pass to the left. Please. He hits Gajewski, but Gajewski is going to be short as he's going to be taken down at around the 12-yard line. A pickup of seven on the pass play, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Not a bad thing, Don. They moved the sticks. You took some time off the clock. You see, see TJ wanting to know why that, that uh, penalty was waved off. Hands are out, wondering what happened. Well, and with that one, that was a 10 minute and 42 second drive though to come out of that with no points is rough. And here they come, number one offense back on the field. 
Door County's defense hasn't been out there much, so they should be well rested. Three receivers left, one to the right for Tony Powell. He has Phillips to his right. Lincoln Way leads 10 zip as they take over on downs at their own 13 yard line. Powell going for the home run, you and he's it. picked off. Ball is, or no, it's caught, caught. by Muhammad. And Muhammad gets up, and he's still on his feet across midfield, now gonna be taken down at the 45 yard line of Door County. So a pickup of 42 yards on the pitch and catch. And that was a great purchase when they got him. He's a fantastic two-way player. Again, another arena player, played with the Blitz, then played with the Chicago Eagles last year. Used to play in both ways. Very versatile player. So a first and 10 with 13.30 to play in the first half. Dora County in trouble. Two receivers each way for Powell. Phillips to his left. Powell gives to Phillips. Phillips tries to fight his way through. Wapus with initial contact and then LeClue cleans it up. No gain on the play and they'll bring up a second down in 10. Dora County, big stop here. Gotta stop, gotta slow down this Lincoln Way team. Your offense isn't doing you many favors. You have to stop them right here. Cannot go down another touchdown. Second and 10 ball at the Door County 45 yard line after the 42 yard pass completion from Powell to Muhammad. Three receivers left, one to the right. Powell has Phillips to his left. Powell takes a snap, looking to his left, under pressure. Yeah. LeClue comes in, can't grab him, and the throw for Phillips is high around midfield and it'll be a third down and 10 for Lincoln Way at the Door County 45 yard line. And just three of six is Tony Powell early on in this game. And there's that big Door County blitz again. And that's, that's what they need to have. 12.39 to play in the first half. 10 zip lead for Lincoln Way. Three receivers to the left, one to the right for Powell. Powell checks with the sideline. Phillips to his left. Powell takes a snap under immediate pressure, throws it There's up, that screen. and it's caught on the screen, but taken down after a gain of six. Is going like to bring flag. fourth and four, and yeah, back where Powell was could be. Personal foul, block below the waist, number nine. It's oh, actually it's below the knee. Back. It's coming back. Phillips with Calvin an illegal Phillips. block. And it's going to bring it back. So take away the, that yardage, and it's going to put it back into Lincoln Way territory all the way back at their 40-yard line. So the fourth penalty against Lincoln Way for 30 yards. And, Don, that's something the refs are going to call this year. This is new. The NFL did it. Probably wasn't something that was put in the Mid-States Football League rulebook, but it is something they're called. We are NFL rules. When you drop back and establish that you are dropping back and then take that hit below the legs, they're going to call it every time. Linebacker LeClue in coverage over on the right side. Powell slings it. It's caught by Trudeau, and Trudeau is free at midfield. Trudeau heading towards the far sideline and steps Doesn't out of it. bounds at around the original lineman scrimmage. See where they mark them. They'll mark them inside the 45, it looks like, at the 43-yard line. So a pickup of 17 yards on that play. Now, do you go for it if you're Lincoln Way? Do you go for the kill shot? I don't think so. I think they're going to punt this ball, but let's see. Yeah, Alvarado coming on. Yeah. He's already out there. Alvarado on the season averaging 39 yards per punt. So... They actually mark it at the 47, so that play goes for 13 yards, not for 17 yards. And it's a fourth down and 12. Wilson back to receive the punt for Door County with 11.50 to play in our first half. It's a 10-0 Lincoln Way lead. Ooh. Some good pressure. A low line drive kick hits at the 20, and it will be downed at the 15-yard line a punt of 32 yards, but it ends up going down as a punt inside the 20 for Alvarado. And Door County again starts deep in their own territory as they're unable to uh, change the field position here in this one, even with that big uh, double-digit minute drive on their last drive. 
And Don, I don't want to go any further without thanking our video crew, Scouts Honor Production, who's bringing you this game live on YouTube. Uh, I got here very early, set that up. If you're looking for live sports film, band, uh, if you are at any type of a DJ wedding, this man is our guy, Scouts Honor Production. Look him up. He is fantastic. All the work you're seeing tonight is brought to you by, by Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Production. So see if Door County can get some points on the board here. It's kind of touchdown or bust tonight for the Destroyers. Aren't looking to pass middle of the field, and it may have been deflected. Looking for Gajewski on the coverage was James Pierce. Second down and 10 for Door County. 13th pass attempt of the game already for TJ Arndt. Again, you got to be careful. You don't want to have to punt the ball again uh, this close. Need to try and change the field position at least, really in a point where you need to get some points on the board. TJ Arndt did miss a streaking Andre Wilson on that play on the left seam. Two receivers each way, Arndt with Tamar Scott to his right. Gajewski in motion, slot right to the left. Arndt looking to pass, looking for Gajewski, hits Gajewski at the 14, and Gajewski taken down after a short gain of maybe a yard or two. It was Gary Young on the tackle for Lincoln Way. Gary Young flying in from his uh, Southern Cal team is a difference maker. You see it, Rookie of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, that speed is immense in this game. Door County has to find a way to get away from Gary Young. So third and eight for Door County. Two receivers each way for Arndt. Tamar Scott standing behind him. Arndt sends Gajewski in motion, slot right to the left again. Hand off to Tamar Scott, and Scott right up the gut. He'll get up to the 20 yard line, a gain of a couple but it's gonna bring up fourth down and Door County will be forced to punt. Not good. On the tackle was Akins for Lincoln Way. And out will come A.J. Hamilton to punt for Door County. Down, you got 10.26 left in the first quarter. Uh, the Door County team will receive the ball in the second half, but you have to, again, you're in that situation. You cannot go down by more than 10 to this Patriot team. Muhammad back to receive the Hamilton uh -oh. punt, and Hamilton has to move nice off job. to his right, gets a nice punt right to Muhammad at the 41-yard oh. line, and Muhammad able to get by the first couple tacklers, slips another tackle at midfield, and Muhammad... The outside numbers is going to finally be brought down by Donnie Johnson at the 42 yard line of Door County. So Door County just having some problems with tackling here tonight. That's something very rare for this Door County team. Yeah. And that's one thing, I uh, want to give a shout out to our owner, uh, former president and current treasurer of the Mid-States Football League, Terry Thomas, who is in the hospital, first memorial recovering. One thing that he always stressed to all his players was Football is very simple. It's blocking and tackling. If you can do those two things very well, you're going to win a lot of games. And unfortunately for Door County, they pick tonight to pick the night not to tackle. And again, the athleticism that the Patriots bring forces that. But you have to do the basics of the game. So Tony Powell leading 10 zip with 9.52 to play in the first half. Sends three receivers left and one to the right. He has Phillips to his left. He pitches it to Phillips. Phillips trying to get the outside edge, but he's slowed up and taken out of bounds by Brian Beachler. It's going to be a loss as they mark it officially back all the way back at the 47-yard line. It'll be a loss of four on the play and make it second down and 14. Beachler with the tackle for loss for Door County. Beachler's having one one big game for him. He's got to keep coming up, though. You saw him on the play where, unfortunately, Finnan went down. Got to keep up that pressure. Powell puts Phillips to his right, three receivers right, one to the left, and now Powell checks with the sideline. Calls the play at the line. Powell takes a snap, fakes the handoff, throwing middle of the big field, pickup. and it is caught and then dropped the Dougie Williams with the catch and it's gonna be good enough for a first down, a pickup of 14. And that's just the second first down of the game.
for Lincoln Way as they go into a hurry up offense now. A.J. Hamilton, I believe, on the tackle there as he's playing a safety position. They try and throw it to Trudeau out in the flat on the right side and Trudeau can't hang on to it and it'll be second down and 10 for Lincoln Way at the Door County 32 yard line. That's a big tackle, big stop. Eight and a half minutes to play. Alvarado on the season, his long made field goal, 45 yards. He was just two for five in field goals. They let him attempt as much as a 48 yarder. That's about the distance they'd be at right here. Three receivers left, one off to the right here for Tony Powell. Powell with Phillips to his right. Second and 10 for Lincoln Way. Powell tries to hit oh. Phillips out of the backfield and that's broken up by Adam Brandt coming in from his left end position and he'll bring up a third down and 10. Don Adam Grant almost had, like Ralph Cabinet used to say, a whole lot of green in front of him. Brandt, another one of those former D1 players that are in the Mid-States Football League. Where did he play? I wanted to say Northern Illinois. I'd have to look it up for sure. Northern or Eastern. I'm a Wisconsin guy. Your fib schools confuse me. <laughs> he just had about 60 <laughs> yards worth of freedom right there. They empty the backfield. Three receivers to the left, two to the right for Tony Powell. Got to watch that big screen. Powell takes a snap under pressure. Oh, Powell good, spins good. away from Hamilton, rolling out to his right, throwing downfield, bobbled but completed. He dropped it. No, dropped. Folks, that's why he's a three-time MVP. That kid sees it, he, he feels it, and he reacts. That, that's a big-time player right there, Tony Powell. Intended for Vesvardis out there, and it's gonna bring up a fourth and 10, and they'll keep the offense out. Will Door County kind of in, or Will Lincoln Way kind of in no man's land as they're at the 31-yard line. A little out of the range of Alvarado. I've seen him kick more, I'm surprised, but I think they think that right now they got uh, Door County's number on offense. Alvarado though just two of five on the season in field goals. Powell talking to Phillips. Phillips to his right, three receivers right, one to the left. Fourth and 10 for Lincoln Way. 8.19 to play in the first half. Powell rolls to his right, throwing Got down him. field. It's caught and held on to by Trudeau before he is leveled by Polifka. But play. we have a flag at the line of scrimmage. Like this could holding. be coming back. Usually right around there it's holding. Block. 69. 15 yards. Keith Haywood four. called for an illegal block. A second time that an illegal block has been called against Lincoln Way in this game. And that'll back him up 15 yards. So Lincoln Way now with five penalties for 45 yards here in the first half and that negates a nice play and a first down by Lincoln Way. And Don, that's something that Lincoln Way's been called for more than a few times, that shot block. What they're called on that time is different than, some, than what Calvin Phillips was called for. What they called on that play is when, you, when one guard or tackle sets up a man, holds him up, and then another man takes that, that shot block. A lot of times it's not intentional. You don't know what the guy's doing next to you, so you take that shot block, but that is illegal. We all work the next day, you cannot have that block. So Alvarado will punt now with it being a fourth down and 25. Ball at the Door County 46 yard line. Beachler coming in on a blitz and Beachler nearly gets there, forces Alvarado to lift it up high in the air. Nice and punt. then it takes a Lincoln Way bounce down inside the 20 to the 11 yard line of Door County. A 35 yard punt, but his second one inside the 20 as he got the roll on that one, Steve. That was a nice punt. Uh, it was a little bit high, he fielded it well, kept his composure, and uh, nice job. Like I said, that's one big thing that's, that Lincoln Way has improved in this year, and that is the special teams. Last year was a bit of a disaster. This year, they have really cleaned it up, both kicking and receiving. It's been just a big turnaround for the Lincoln Way Patriots. Door County starting field position in this game thus far. Their own 14, own 20, own 16, own 15, and now own 11 yard line. So now can the offense mount a drive with 7.42 to play in the first half and cut into this 10-0 lead. Tamar Scott right up the middle and he's taken down hard 
and it's Perry Sanders on the tackle and it'll bring up a second down and nine and we have an injured player on the field again for Lincoln Way. It looked like, or maybe this is Door County and the Lincoln Way trainers heading out there. No, it's, yeah, it's a Door County player. That might be Tamar Scott. That's not good. And Door County, if that is Tamar Scott, when Door County and Racine played up in Bailey's Harbor, Door County was controlling that game with Tamar Scott, and Tamar Scott suffered an injury, and then that was pretty much it for Door County. They could not get anything else going, and Racine ended up running away with it. So Tamar Scott down for Door County, and the number two back in there would be Justin Baker, although they've been using him more at a receiver as of late, but he's averaging 4.4 yards a carry, and Scott up and off under his own power. Although he is uh, favoring, looks like that right leg. He's not uh, bending his knee much on that right leg as he walks off the field. Want to well, thank you for joining us here tonight, Don Wadowitz, Steve Sleepka, and Ivan Ortega, bringing you the 2016 Mid States Football League Championship game from Hart Park. Well, it looks like it's it looks like a hamstring pull. The way he's walking, the way he's not bending that leg, uh, he's grabbed at it a few times. They're going to need him to come back. Two receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. That is Wilson off to the right. I formation backfield behind Arndt looks to be Blucher. That is the deep back. The pitch goes to Blucher to the right side. He cuts, changes direction to the left, trying to find an angle, but he's gonna be dropped by Barksdale back inside the 10 yard line at the nine, a loss of three, and it'll be a third down and 11, maybe 12 for Door County, and Door County is gonna take a timeout. That's that speed we talked about with Racine Raiders, both offense and defense. They go side to side very well. Uh, they got away from that that the uh, wide receiver screen or that three to four yard zone pass. Uh, seems like they've gotten away from that. I wonder if that's something they're gonna go back to uh, quickly. Uh, again, now they're looking at third and I believe nine. 12. 12, that's not good. That's something you can't do when you're the Door County Destroyers. You don't have those big weapons. Uh, to deal with that, that speed. Yeah, the person with the uh, distance marker apparently fell asleep on the far side <laughs> of the field there, so has, it hasn't moved from the uh, where the ball was spotted before that play. So your eyes aren't playing tricks Good. on you, just so you know. Good. I know I'm getting a little up there in age, so I was kind of worried about that. <laughs> I thought it was maybe the uh, pregame tailgate. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that too, and thank you for Kelly Starrett for bringing up uh, our my libations thank you very much uh, again shout out to the mid uh, the Midwest Chargers what a great host tonight uh, very happy about how tonight's turned out backs flanking aren't two receivers to the right one to the left on a third and 12 ball at the nine yard line of Door County aren't throwing no chance and nowhere close looking for Robbie Fritch on the far sideline it's incomplete and Door County will be forced to punt as they move backwards on that drive a couple of yards. It ends at their nine yard line and they send out A.J. Hamilton to punt trailing 10 zip in this Mid-States Football League Championship game, 7.03 to play. Don, I don't know if you see this, uh, being a player, body language is something I look at big. Uh, looks like you're starting to see some heads go down on, on the Door County uh, sideline. I know they are a big comeback team, so you hope that's not something they're thinking about already. Uh, Dan Harris, their honorable mention, all league right tackle, looked to be a little slow getting off the field as well. Hamilton spends a lot of time getting that one off and it was tipped at, uh, at the punt and Muhammad fields it at the 40, a 31 yard punt. It'll be first and 10 for Lincoln Way at the Door County 40 yard line. And this is the second straight drive that they start inside the Door County half of the field. Can't keep wearing out that defense. The defense keeps going out here. Door County isn't big on numbers. You're going to start seeing that strain. It's a very physical game. Not a very hot night, but still, when you're out there time and time again, having that big offensive line lean on you. 
three receivers right for Lincoln Way and Tony Powell. One off to the left, that's Muhammad. Phillips to the left of Powell, who's in the shotgun. They lead 10 zip. Powell audibles. Tony's Powell going deep. Looking to throw, yep. middle of the field, hits Trudeau on the slant, coming across, and Trudeau, Trudeau taken down by Hamilton, a gain of two on the play. Don, as big as this offensive attack has been tonight, and granted they've only put up one touchdown, you could see that play used to be designed for Alexis Jackson, and that was a big gainer every time. Trudeau is a great athlete. He's an all-star, but... Lexus, Lexus Jackson is one of a kind, and, and I think you're kind of seeing that. Three receivers right, one to the left again for Powell. Powell, quick pass right to Muhammad. Muhammad makes the catch on the screen at the 40, and Muhammad is going to be driven back at the 35-yard line of Door County. And Arlander Wade walking off the field, heading to the locker room for Lincoln Way, so that could be a loss to their uh, to their defense. A gain of three on the play, it'll make it a third down and five. Leon Hill got a little, got out there a little late on that screen, uh, well played. Their short game for Lincoln Way, that, that's their big, big plus. And they come out now a third and five at the Door County 36 yard line, two receivers each way for Powell. Phillips to his left, Powell takes a snap, looking, buying time, rolling out hold. to his right. Powell throwing downfield and in and out, is it caught? Did he have it? No, no possession by Steve Trudeau as he's taken out of bounds by Donnie Johnson. He bobbled it along the far sideline. Well, looks like they're giving oh, it to him. Oh, they're giving it to him now. They're giving it to him. Guys, if you're gonna let him hold every time like that, and it's going both ways, it's, uh, it's gonna be a long day. So a 15 yard pickup and a first down for Lincoln Way. So saw one of the, it looked like one of the officials came in waving incomplete, but the other one must have overruled them. Two receivers each way for Powell. Phillips to his left. Five minutes to play in our first half. Powell throwing Muhammad, makes the catch inside the five yard line and he's gonna be taken down at the two. On the tackle was Jake Hall for Door County, but it'll be a first and goal for Lincoln Way. There's that speed. So Muhammad with his fourth catch here in the first half with for 75 yards. First and goal at the two. The pitch goes to Phillips trying to get outside, breaks the tackle and into the end zone. And the lead is 16 zip in favor of Lincoln Way with 4.33 to play in our first half. Don, that's a tired defense right there. And they haven't been out there much. That's the thing, Steve. Yeah, you see a lot of hands on hips, uh, guys going down to a knee in between plays. Uh, that, that's just a sign of being tired right now. Whether it's a frustration, but look, you got to look at it. You haven't played good football. You come back and score, it's 17-7, it's assuming he makes this kick, and then you get that ball back in the second half. Might be 17-8. I don't think they're going to go for the extra point. So. Yeah, true. true. Alvarado on to try and make it a 17-zip lead for Lincoln Way. Snap is there, bobbled by Vesvardis, but they're able to connect and put it through. And with 4.33 to play in the first half, it's a 17-0 lead for Lincoln Way. So now what does Door County have to do here, Steve, to kind of fight back? Well, you definitely can't punt again, and you can't turn the ball over. Uh, you gotta make something happen. I know you don't have your field goal kicker. Right now, we're probably looking at a, at a different game. At least three points had they had their special teams player. And this is a special message that goes out to all you people. Don't get married during football season. Come on, man. You know better than that. Everybody I know got married after October 14th because that's when our championship games used to be. So stop it. Well, and to be fair, I don't think it's his wedding. So. Well, you stood, then you don't go. If it's a friend, <laughs> if it's a real friend, you don't ask a friend to miss a championship game. Come on now. Alvarado will kick off back deep. It's Blucher and Wilson for Door County. 
big return here would help things out. The field position game has been in favor of Lincoln Way. Guys, look for a, look for an onside kick. He's looked twice back at his teammates. And they did a late substitution. They Watch for put it. Jerome Connor out there on the left side at the last minute. Look for it. Approaches the ball. No. Nope. And a shorter kick this time. Wilson is going to field it at the 11, middle of the field. Wilson, the 20, breaks it outside nope. the 25, the 30. Good coverage. And he'll be taken down at the 32-yard line. The tackle made by Kennedy Watts for Lincoln Way. But this is still the best starting field position for Door County in the game by far. Previously, their best had been on a... Uh, kickoff out of the end zone where they start at their 20 they're up at their 31 with a first and 10 426 to play in our first half and they have two timeouts remaining well here's the thing you you, you can't not risk giving that ball over again uh, you, you have to if I was them I'd go back to that screenplay or that quick pass Whitney out to the left Along, joined out there by Warabi Fritch. Wilson one-on-one -on, -one on the right side. Arndt, flanked by Bax. No, that's Gajewski. Gajewski nice. gives to Baker. Baker with some room. The 40, big play, Baker. Big play, big play. Baker, he could the go. 35, the 30, the 25, and chase down from behind all the way down to the 21-yard line. And a big play for Door County as they go for 48 yards on the run by Baker. Don, that's a big play. That, get, that gets your energy up again if you're Door County. Now you have to deliver, you have to do something. Antoine Jones with the tackle, he chased him down from behind and they'll mark it at the 22 now, a first and 10 for Door County. Baker in there to the right. It looks like Scott is back into the left as Gajewski's in at quarterback. Gajewski takes, and he's going to try and get off no, right end. Gajewski with the corner, and he's going to be upended inside the 15-yard line by Muhammad. He'll be down at the 14, a gain of eight by Gajewski. And so here's Door County. They put Gajewski in there to kind of change things up a little bit. Running that option offense, and so far it, it seems to be working for him well. Uh, again, Got to deliver here. Don't have your field goal kicker. Got to get it within it. Like you said, within nine. <laughs> and Gajewski hasn't thrown a pass this season. 25 of 49 rushing coming into the game. Two receivers right, one to the left for Door County. Gajewski flanked by Baker on the right and Scott on the left. Gajewski takes, gives to Baker. Baker with the lane and Baker. Webster will take him down at the 10 yard line. Enough for a first down on the pickup of five. Don, it's going to be interesting to see if they bring up that safety. Right now he's still playing in that cover two, probably 10 yards back. And now you're starting to hear Door County sideline. We're starting to rumble here, so if you see the screen shaking. Shaking the press box here at Hart Park. Well, Robbie Fritch all alone, one-on-one. -on -one. Out on the left side with Antoine Jones. Gajewski with backs on each side. Gajewski takes. Gajewski trying that left side, and Gajewski is going to be taken down at the ankles by Perry Sanders. A pickup of one. It'll be second and goal from the nine, and for Perry Sanders, his fifth tackle of the game. So far, the big man has kept his, kept his endurance out there. He hasn't come off the field too many times. Looks and like Door County is going to let it go down to the two-minute warning here, two Steve, and take a break and talk about it. They got a second and goal from the Lincoln Way nine-yard line, and this is one of the things Door County two weeks ago against Racine. It was 14-zip. Door County able to get a field goal with a couple of minutes left to play in the first half. Then Racine went for it on a fourth down near midfield, didn't convert. Door County able to pick up one big pass play, and then they were able to kick a field goal going into halftime and put themselves down by just one possession, 14 to six. And then it was all Door County in the second half. Here, Lincoln Way up by a little bit more, 17 zip as we get things going here with two at the two minute warning. And 
eight points if you go for the two point and get it. It isn't gonna get you within one possession, but that would still be uh, some big motivation going into half, knowing too that you're gonna get the ball coming out to start the second half of play. Now, the one thing I wanted to ask you, now you mentioned that Guy Eske hasn't had any throwing, any uh, pass completions. Can he throw the ball? That's a good question. We'll find out. <laughs> you and I both will we we'll may find out about that one here. So see what uh, see what Door County decides to do now that they have Matt Gajewski in there. And just pulling up uh, the Door County stats on the season. Yeah. They have A.J. Hamilton has tried a couple of passes on the season where Robbie Fritch has tried a few passes but nothing for Matt Gajewski. So second and goal for Door County, ball at the nine yard line of Lincoln Way. And here comes that safety cheating up. Gajewski gives to Tamar Scott. Scott lowers a shoulder, runs into that line and he's driven back. Tackle made for Lincoln Way by Jeremiah Job. No Todd. gain on the play. It'll be third and goal from the nine and a timeout taken by Lincoln Way here. Interesting with 149 to play. Don, you wonder if there's a little bit of miscommunication there. You see what uh, two linemen have had their hands up wondering, looking to see what's going on. Uh, and you also saw the fullback looking to see. Uh, you wonder if something was missed there. It's a 17-0 lead for Lincoln Way. So. Door County has been down in this area once before. Once again, in case you're joining us late, Eric Natwick, the special teams player of the year, the hall, the honorable mention all league kicker for Door County, not at the game tonight. He had a wedding that he had to go to and was unable to make the game. So Door County playing without one of their biggest weapons in Natwick. The wedding of a bad friend. <laughs> <laughs> So see here what Door County decides to do. Gajewski has not attempted a pass this season. He's let him down here on this drive. Big run by Baker, set, it up, set him up down here. Gajewski has Baker to his right, fakes a handoff to Baker, rolling to his right, Gajewski throwing, oh, and it's gonna man, be picked off in the end zone. Intercepted by Fuller, Fuller is looking to take it out, and he does up to the five yard line. So Gajewski's first pass of the season is an interception by Alex Fuller, and that's how the Door County drive will end with a minute 38 left to play here in the first half. Well, I guess that's why he doesn't throw. So Gajewski with the interception. That's the second interception thrown by Door County in the game. Lincoln Way will have it at their own five yard line with 1.38 to play in our first half. Lincoln Way with two timeouts remaining. They lead 17 zip. Alex Fuller's developed into one, uh, one hell of a player. Um, just over the years has developed into a great cover corner, anticipates the ball well. Two receivers each way for Powell. He has Phillips to his right. Looking to pass, throwing, completed to Muhammad at uh -oh. the 10. Muhammad gets uh -oh. the sideline. Muhammad Touchdown. is gonna go all the way. Muhammad, no 90, flag. five yards from Alex Powell, but there is, did you say if no you flag, saw a flag? No, no flag. flag, 95 yards from Powell to Muhammad. And for Powell, by far his longest completion of the season, the previous to that, it had been 49 yards. Well, that's Tony Powell. He's not, he doesn't have a big arm. He's not going to throw it 35 yards. He's got the speed and the athleticism to do it. Uh, and, guys, one of the big keys, and I called it out in one of my predictions, is, is this. The South was very, very undervalued. The South was very good, and I think sometimes people thought that the North was where it came from. You're seeing that speed right now. Only the Chicago Thunder kept this team under three touchdowns. Now Alvarado will try and make it a 24 zip lead as Lincoln Way is starting to pull away with this game in the first half. Door County with such a big win two weeks ago in Racine, playing a near perfect game, doing just the opposite here tonight. 
against Lincoln Way, and they trail 24 to zero with a minute 24 to play in our first half. Well, you wonder too, Steve, you know, if you're playing a team, Door County, where they had to play Racine to just get into this game, Racine had manhandled them in their previous four meetings. They got through that game, and if you would have seen the reactions there, obviously a lot of celebrating. They, they, were, they were extremely happy to have that victory, and you almost wonder if that's kind of your high, and how do you get up even higher from that to get ready for a championship game like this? Well, you know, being an athlete, especially semi-pro, uh, hitting that hole-in-one, uh, you know, scoring that first takedown victory as a wrestler, beating Racine, that, that's, that's, a, that's a big goal. I mean, when you do that, especially a team, Door County, third year in the MSFL, able to get over that hump, once you do that, it's hard. It, it, it doesn't, you shouldn't be that way, but you are. We're built as human beings to go through highs and lows, and, and unfortunately you may be seeing that. Uh, you're going to see how, how much metal these guys have and how good that coaching staff is. It could get ugly. Wilson and Blucher back deep for Dora County, awaiting the Alvarado kick, trailing 24 zip. Alvarado sends it to Blucher at the 11 yard line. Blucher, middle of the field, the 20, the 25, little spin move and he'll be taken down at the 28 yard line. It's gonna be first and 10 for Door County there and they need a score here. This one's starting to get out of hand. Steven Arredondo with the tackle for the Lincoln Way Patriots. Do you go for a score or do you down the ball? I mean, <laughs> you're getting the ball back. If you turn it over again, you're pretty much done. But you have a minute 18 and, and two timeouts remaining and you're down three scores. Yeah. That's a lot of time and Dor and uh, Lincoln Way still has a couple timeouts too that they could use to force you to punt here. So you need to make something happen. They start at their 29 yard line, aren't in there at quarterback again, two receivers each way. Tamar Scott to his right, aren't looking to throw, going for the Wilson at midfield and overthrows Wilson, Fuller, covered out there and it'll be incomplete and bring up a second down in 10. Trying to figure out who 21 is. We got a number change that Anthony Hughes was gonna be 38, but I think he's went back to 21 here. So Lincoln Way leading 24 zip over Door County. Three receivers to the left, one to the right for Arndt. Tamar Scott off his right hip. Arndt on the delay gives to Scott. Scott gets through the line. Scott the 40 and he's gonna be taken down at the 42 yard line, hurry. a pickup of 13 and a first down. Fans, if you're watching on YouTube, we're gonna have a Hall of Fame celebration here tonight. Jim Brasaja, Steve Strimmel, Bill Callis and RJ Jarrett will be inducted amongst the very best in the Mid-States Football League. Same formation for Arndt. Arndt looking to the left, throwing to the left. Gajewski with the catch. And he's gonna be, and flags come in. Is there some extracurricular between Wilson and Fuller? That's gonna go, Fuller. Against, that's gonna go against Fuller. On the sideline, the pickup of six on the pass play to Gajewski. Gajewski with his fifth catch of the game. And Wilson getting in the officials huddle. Uh-oh. That may not be uh, good for him. And now he's going in back a way, there. It's gonna be against Wilson. Two flags came out. And a long discussion as Wilson's heading over to the sideline now. They're gonna call it on Wilson. Personal foul, necessary roughness number five wide. It's the reason the clock stopped. We're gonna go back 15, set the clock to 28 seconds. We're gonna start the clock on the ready. How was it on number five? Yeah, I don't know, I think they might have misspoken. 
And I'm not quite sure why they're knocking the 10 seconds off. I guess Door County could take a timeout if they mm -hmm. wanted to, but it'll not knock them back 15 yards from the spot. And it's gonna bring up a first down. And about 20 here for Door County. Aren't looking to the left, pump uh -oh. fakes under pressure, rolling out Throwing to the left away. and throws it away. Gajewski out in the area on the far side. Aren't is gonna be slow to get up now. As I believe that was Gary Young that applied the pressure and took Arndt down. And Arndt is now up under his own power, but 18.8 .8 seconds left to play in our first half. It's a 24-0 lead for Lincoln Way. That's the 18th pass attempt of the half by TJ Arndt. They had a double digit minute drive between the first quarter and second quarter, but came up empty handed. Two receivers each way for Arndt. Now he sends Baker in motion, slot left to the right. Blitz coming, picked up by Scott. He hits Baker coming out of the backfield. He slips a tackle at the 36. Baker still on his feet and finally taken down at the 43 yard line, a gain of 19. And it'll bring up a fourth and 10, and Lincoln Way will take a timeout so that Interesting. they're gonna force Door County to punt. With it fourth and 10 and nine seconds on the clock. So gonna see if they can get a return here. That would put them up by more than three scores. They're already up 24 zip, three scores here in this one. Looking, they don't have Muhammad out there back deep though. They have James Pierce back deep. Door County keeping their offense on the field. And there goes Pierce. Three receivers right, one to the left. Maybe they're just hoping that Arndt will throw it deep and run out the clock here. Again, you gotta watch out for that Lincoln Way speed. Prevent defense here for Lincoln Way it looks like. Watch for a draw. On fourth and 10. Waiting for everybody to get ready. Now we're ready. Arndt has Tamar Scott in the backfield and now we have a timeout, timeout taken by Door County. So waiting to see what Door County decides they're gonna do here. On fourth and 10, ball at their own 43 yard line. What do you do at this, this point? Your door county, do you just go ahead and punt it with 11 seconds left? Uh, you know, you have Hamilton who has some speed as your punter here. He could maybe run around for a little bit, but Lincoln Way has gotten close on the uh, on the other punts by Hamilton, just as uh, door county has also gotten close on a couple of the punts by Alvarado. So that hasn't been a sure thing here either, Steve. So yeah, do you just sit there and uh, and it looked like Lincoln Way was going into a prevent, so you can just kind of toss it up deep towards the sideline, make sure you don't throw a pick. But it looks like maybe they're gonna send out the punting unit now after talking about it, and that is the case. So here's the punt team. So you have a chance, Hamilton, with the long snap, could just kind of run around for a few seconds and then get off a punt and hope that uh, time runs out. So we'll have to see here. Outdoor County decides that they're gonna handle this one. Hamilton will punt. Right now, Door County has no answer for Chris Muhammad. That's why he gets paid play with the Eagles in, in uh, formerly with the Blitz. Looks like Anthony Hughes is gonna go back deep. No Marzell Green. To receive this one. Hamilton, he's oh, gonna fake it. Oh, and that's an awful was that? pass. And they only run three seconds off the clock. Wow, terrible. So not sure what was going on there. Man, that was the old baseball throw where you try to throw it and it comes off the, the tip of your fingers. It's terrible. So six seconds left. Wow. And now Lincoln Way has it at the Door County 43 yard line and they just rattle off a 95 yard touchdown pass. 
Muhammad on the receiving end of that one. He has 172 yards receiving on five receptions in the game. And with six seconds, they could get a quick pass and then try and set up an Alvarado field goal attempt here as well. I think you're gonna see that screen. Is Muhammad out there? He'll be on the yeah, right along the sideline here. that's what you're gonna see. They're gonna send three receivers to the left. Trudeau will be all alone off to the right side. Phillips to the left of Powell. They need to get to about the 30 to give it a fair shake for Alvarado. There it Powell is. Oh, no, Phillips. Ha pitches it back Pitch to pass. Phillips. Phillips, the left-handed toss, and the interception is made back at the five-yard line, and then did he lose it, or are they calling it a pick? Calling it a pick. Here comes the so, offense. Polifka with the That's interception, it. and that was how the end of the half will happen. So Phillips throws the interception, and at the half, 24 to zip the lead for Lincoln Way over Door County in the 2016 Mid-States Football League Championship game. And we're gonna have our Hall of Fame inductees. That'll be taking place in just a couple of moments as soon as they get everything sorted out and Steve is able to make his way down to the field as he gets redressed. It's not a pretty sight up here, folks. There's a reason we haven't turned the camera over towards us. Kept it in the field of play here, but it's a 24 to zero lead in favor of the Lincoln Way Patriots. We're gonna have our Hall of Fame induction ceremony from the field. We'll turn it over to that and you'll be picking that up in just a moment here on the 2016 Mid-States Football League broadcast of the championship game at Hart Park in Wauwatosa. This is the Halftime Report. Tonight's 2016 Mid-States Football League Championship game is brought to you by Brewskies, located near 76th and Blue Mound Road in Wauwatosa.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2016 Hall of Fame induction. <laughs> Thank you. First, we'd like to welcome to induct Jim Bersadia, Chris Walter. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the MSFL and the Hall of Fame Committee for allowing me to come here and, and, and speak on behalf of Jim. Uh, I had the rare privilege of playing both against Jim and with him. Um, our time against each other, he has a highlight hit against me. If you go on YouTube and take a look at it, he caught me out of a spin move. But uh, our time together in the Mustangs were probably the best five, six years that I played with him. Uh, there's nobody worth of, worthy of this more than Jim beside it is. Um, and I know without his family, he could have done what he could have done. Joe and June and that cowbell, ringing it. There you go. Yeah. And Jenna, I know dealing with Jim, it's tough being a, the girlfriend of a football player. So we, we thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you again, Jim. It was, it was a pleasure playing. And you, when you picked me, I was absolutely humbled. And like I said, nobody else deserves this more than you. And you're my favorite defensive player of all time. And number 54 in your hearts, number one in your programs oh, all the way around whatever the saying is <laughs> thank you Chris I appreciate it Rob thank you very much it's a tremendous honor uh, thank you Chris for inducting me my family my friends uh, I can't thank you enough for being there for me every year the Mustangs Siggy thanks for coming out bro <laughs> but uh yeah, thank you, friends, family, ex-teammates, the league, my coaches, everybody. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Our next inductee, Andre Jarrett, number 90 of the Racing Raiders, to present Larry Williams. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, this is a huge honor for me, my family, my little bro out here. Uh, my little big bro, he showed me a lot of things about football and tenacity and going after what you want. This guy right here, he's a jokester, but once he got on the field, it was all business. And you didn't want no parts of this dude right here. I guarantee that. So with that being said, I'm going to keep it short because I really got to go to the bathroom. But um, my brother, I love you to death, man, Andre Jarrett. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I humbly uh, appreciate this. I'm very thankful for it, but uh, I want to thank the racing uh, organization more. They put me in a position to get this award, and I can't uh, accept this without uh, giving thanks to uh, uh, the Raiders, Wilbur, the O-line. You know, they, they made me work hard in practice. So, so Dusty, I see Chad, all those guys. Big props to you guys, big props to Wilbur, Raider organization. I definitely appreciate you guys, and um, I accept this humbly. Thank you. And to our next inductee, multiple time champion head coach, Bill Callis, inducted by his wife, Jessica. Thank you. I'm going to be a little more long-winded. I wrote stuff down. From the start of his coaching career, from, the, from coaching his boys in junior tackle to coaching my women's ba team in the Bay Bowl to the Rocked and Rush, my husband has always done it for the love of the game. He has a big heart, always out for what's best for his players. His players looked up to him and admired him for his talent and as a leader, a friend, and authority figure. The way he managed his team over the decades shows 
in the win-loss columns, but also in the friendships he made along the way. I asked for some put input up from the players, finding out I had to introduce him. Just a few quotes. He was a father figure to all his players, always brought out the best in everyone. He made many sacrifices just to make sure he was there and held himself accountable for every win or loss. One said he put time in for his teammates, but more importantly, because he knew Coach Callis was going to be there to guide him. Um, one called him his hero. He is my hero. He's a father of two boys. He's a wonderful grandfather to two beautiful granddaughters and my best friend. Oh. During the 10 years as head coach, his rush accomplishments include head coach for 10 years, his record over 10 years was 110 wins and 31 losses, two league championships, three league championship appearances, two national championship appearances, coach of the year, 10 playoff appearances, um, MLFN Hall of Fame in 2015, and now 2016 MSFL Hall of Fame. I'm proud to introduce my husband, Coach Bill Callis. Since Steve took so long to get down here, we had to really keep this short. Uh, really, I just got to thank my family, you know, starting with a football family, the players for uh, believing in our systems, doing what, uh, whatever I asked or whatever our coaches asked. Uh, w without hesitation to do what, whatever we needed to get done. The coaches themselves, the time they put in to, uh, to make uh, ourselves a successful organization. This is really a... Uh, goes out to all of them. It shows uh, what uh, a reflection of all of them. Uh, our owners uh, never hesitated in letting us do what we needed to do on the field and get things done to, uh, to make sure we uh, could put a winning product on the field. Most importantly, my uh, immediate family. Uh, my wife and kids for, for all the time they gave us to, uh, to, to put in the work to, and, and do this. Um, it, it's it's part of a family. Uh, they players even called my wife "Mama Coach," and I just love everything. It's uh, thank you for so much. Ladies and ladies and gentlemen, our last inductee, 2016 head coach Steve Strimmel. Coach Stribble could not make it here tonight, and if you know Steve, he called me probably about an hour ago, said he couldn't make it, and he said, can you say some things? And I said, what things? I don't know, just say some things. So I'm going to say some things. Coach Stribble asked that I tell you guys why the Patriots were formed, and that was for Jake, Lo Jake Lowe, Army Specialist, number 54, who was killed in the line of duty. And that is why the Patriots have their name. That is why he dedicated his time to the Lincoln Way Patriots. And he just wanted me to say thank you for all of you and to John Bush for all you have done. Thanks, have a great second half. Thank you to all the 2016 Hall of Famers.
We're at the half of the Mid-States Football League Championship game, and it's 24-zip in favor of the Lincoln Way Patriots. Hopefully you enjoyed the Hall of Fame inductions. Give you some stats before we close out the half here. 14 carries for 44 yards for Tamar Scott. Baker with two for 53 for the Door County Destroyers. Three carries for 12 yards for Matt Gajewski. 10 of 19 passing for 62 yards for TJ Arndt with an interception. Also with an interception in the game is Matt Gajewski. Five catches for 23 yards receiving for Gajewski. Two for 16 for Wolrabi Fritch and three for 29 for Baker. Time of possession actually in favor of Door County, 17-21 to 12-39. For Lincoln Way, Powell is 10 of 15, 216 yards and a TD. They have five penalties for 60 yards in the first half. Six carries for three yards for Phillips. Five catches, 173 yards and a TD for Muhammad. So about ready for kickoff. I think they're just waiting for the chain gang here at the field. And Bloom. You have been listening to the halftime report of the Mid-States Football League 2016 championship game. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Brewskies, located near 76th and Blue Mound Road in Wauwatosa. So we're about ready for the second half. Both teams are out there waiting the opportunity to get things started. Alvarado will be kicking off. It will be Door County football to start things off. They lead 24 to zip. This Door County team, or they trail 24 to zip, does Door County. This Door County team, very much a second half team. Door County with 10 first downs in that first half to just five for Lincoln Way. So Door County will get it to start off our third quarter. They are missing their kicker, Eric Natwick, and that has hampered them a little bit in that first half of play. So Alvarado on to kick off. He's kicking into the wind, although the breeze here is really limited right now. It's fielded by Wilson at the five, right up the middle of the field of the 20, breaks to the outside on the far side, cuts back a little bit, and he will dance out of bounds at the 25-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Door County at their own 25, which is one of their best starting field positions of the game. 31, 29, and 25 yard line has been the starting field positions on the last three drives for the Destroyers. Thank you for joining us. Don Wadowitz, Steve Sleepka, and Ivan Ortega here at Hart Park in Wauwatosa bringing you all the action of this 2016 Mid-States Football League Championship game. Aren't still in at quarterback for Door County. He'll have two receivers to the right and one to the left. He's flanked by backs. Tamar Scott to his left, Justin Baker to his right. He's looking to pass, looking middle of the field. Gajewski with the catch at the 40, and Gajewski into Lincoln Way territory as he gets across midfield before he's taken down by James Pierce. And they will mark it as a 29-yard pickup. Gajewski right up to the line, 52 yards receiving for Gajewski now. Hand off to Tamar Scott, he breaks it off right tackle and he lowers his head and is down to the 40 yard line before he's taken down by Barksdale along with Fuller on the tackle. A pickup of six and it'll bring up a second down and four for Door County. Door County coming out. Moving the ball down the field well here on this first drive of the second half. Aren't throwing behind Will Robbie Fr uh, Fritch and low over to the left side. Incomplete. It'll bring up a third down and four for Door County. A minute five expired in our third quarter. 24 to zip the lead for Lincoln Way. Door County without Eric Natwick, the special teams player of the year in the Mid-States Football League this season. That's cost him at least six points in this game. Well, Robbie Fritch all alone out to the left side. Gajewski and Wilson to the right. Wilson has been quiet, not a catch in the game. Arndt gives 
The handoff to Tamar Scott, and he's dropped by Perry Sanders. No gain for Tamar Scott, and that will bring up a fourth down and five for Door County, and they're going to send out the punting unit. Perry Sanders, first team, all league player, and we see why here. He has six tackles in the game. A.J. Hamilton on to punt as Door County looking to change the field position battle here in the game. Hughes back deep for Lincoln Way. Hamilton, line drive kick. Hughes is gonna field it at the six. Up to the 10, dancing around, and then he runs into Roy at about the 12 yard line, and he'll be driven back, and it's gonna be first and 10 Lincoln Way at their own 12 yard line. Kyle Roy with his third tackle of the game. And with 13.03 to play in our third quarter, Lincoln Way with a 24 point lead, has the football, a first and 10 at their own 12 yard line. Perhaps a bad decision by Hughes to try and return that one. Likely would have gone into the end zone. They could have had eight extra yards on it. So Lincoln Way, will send two receivers each way. Powell with Phillips to his right. Powell calling the play at the line. Takes a snap, fakes a handoff to Phillips, throwing off to the right side, a diving attempt at a catch by Hughes. Can't come up with it, and it'll bring up a second down and 10. Powell now 10 of 16 in the game for 216 yards. Nearly half of those Oh, and it's going to be a flag 15 and a first. against Door County for roughing the quarterback and a 15-yard penalty. Just the second penalty of the game against Door County, but they've been big ones, 15 yarders each. And that one gives Lincoln Way a first down. First and 10, Lincoln Way at the 27 yard line, their own. So Door County gets them, gets Lincoln Way out of a jam with the penalty. Two receivers each way again for Powell. He has Phillips on his left. Marzell Green in the slot on the left side. Muhammad out wide to the left. The handoff to Phillips and Phillips is gonna be taken down by Robert Sally. Phillips across the 30 yard line to the 31 yard line, a pickup of about four yards on the play, and it'll bring up a second down and six, make it a gain of five, a second down and five. First tackle of the game for Sally. Hurry up offense again here for Lincoln Way. Two receivers each way again for Powell with Phillips to his right. Powell takes, looking to throw to his right. Oh. Completes the pass on the slant. It's Hughes with the tackle in front of Hulbert. It'll be enough for a first down up to the 47 yard line, a pickup of 15. And the second first down of the half here for Lincoln Way and Hulbert with his first tackle. And we have an official timeout as there's Hulbert is a little shaken up. Guys, sorry it took me so long to get back. I am a multi-talented individual, so I had to fill out one of those talents. And that is a uh, field announcing, so PA announcement. Field announcement. So I'm awesome. You're not up here. No, I am an awesome. So and Hulbert down. That could be a big loss for Dora County as they try and manage their way through this passing attack from Lincoln Way. And talked about some of the halftime stats while you were down there making your way up, Steve. 10 of 15 for Powell for 216 yards in the TD. Five for 173 in the TD for Muhammad. Six catches for, or six rushes for three yards in the first half for Calvin Phillips. And Halbert not putting any pressure on that left leg as he comes off the field, and that's not good for Door County. That's a big loss for him. Having to replace him out there is Alex Whitney, one of their backup quarterbacks. Powell gives to Phillips. Phillips a good burst through the line before he runs into Sally and LeClue, but he keeps pushing it forward. 
and Phillips will get into Door County territory to their 49 yard line. A pickup of four for Phillips and it'll be second down and six. And Robert Sally making his presence known. Two receivers each way. For Powell here, second down and six, 11.20 to play in the third quarter, 24 zip is the lead for Lincoln Way. Powell audibles, talks to Phillips, takes it, looking to his left, out of the backfield, trying to hit Marzell Green and through Green's hands before he's hit hard by Hamilton. It'll bring up a third down and six for Lincoln Way. 11.07 to play in our third quarter. Door County, they got it one big play in that the first drive of this quarter, but then just couldn't keep it going. Green and Muhammad off to the left side, two receivers to the right, Powell in the shotgun. He has Phillips to his right. Door County led time of possession in the first half by almost five minutes, but didn't put up any points. Powell looking, backing up, rolling out there to his left. Sally giving chase, throwing down field, nope. a duck. Nope. And Phillips unable to come up with it at the 35 yard line. They'll bring up fourth down for Lincoln Way. Punt team coming out. And Powell just one of four for 15 yards here in the third quarter. Well, that's Tony Powell. I mean, you're gonna, he's gonna get those short receptions and when you get that run after catch, those bolster numbers. Wilson will go back to field this punt. Lincoln Way gets it into Door County territory, but no more than that. And Alvarado will come out to try and pin Door County back deep. He's had a good night punting, two inside the 20 already, a good chance to land a third in there. Watch that fake punt. Beachler coming. Alvarado, oh. a high kick, fair catch called for by Wilson, and he makes it at the 16-yard line. So a 33-yard punt, but another one inside the 20 for Alvarado. And for Alvarado, he only uh, he averaged 40 yards a punt and uh, is showing off uh, showing off an ability to punch it inside that 20 here tonight, Steve. Don, they also did a great job on, on Door County when they rushed the punter to lay off of that. It looked like they were gonna hit him and, and draw yet another penalty, and they, they did a nice job putting their hands up and just running by. So Can, Door, oh, sorry, go ahead, Steve. Just can't afford another mistake. Door County pinned back rather deep again at their 16-yard line after a couple of drives where they had been out a little bit. Field position battle definitely in favor of Lincoln Way in this game. Two receivers right, one to the left, aren't under center. Gives to Tamar Scott, he runs into his own lineman and is able to turn it into some positive yardage before he's taken down by Arlander Wade. A gain of one on the play and it'll be second down and nine for Door County. Ball at the 17 yard line. Don, if I'm one thing, it's a man of the people. And one thing I noticed when I, when I was outside and I was talking to a few people is they said that Door County looked physically tired. Do you think that Racing Raiders game took it out of them physically? Not just the mental aspect that you asked me earlier, but do you think they're physically beat? I, you know, and I turn it to you as a former player, you've had a week off to be able to kind of get over that. How much of an effect would that have on you? As Arndt rolls out to his right under pressure, throwing it towards the sideline for Wilson and way short, and Wilson a little frustrated as he throws his hands to his side. But I mean, is it, you know, that week after a hard hitting game like that, I mean, you gotta be sore and, and that's a big recovery week probably, is having that week off maybe made that much of an impression here tonight? Well, part of the problem is, is when you're Door County, you're only, you're only pulling 31 guys and you've had so many close games where you don't have, you know, 10 games, this is the first time we've played a 10 game schedule in this league. You're, you may be seeing that, especially after a big physical game like they had against Racine, always having to come back, always having to use all your personnel. You may see, be seeing the culmination of that. A big third down here, third and eight for Door County at their own 18 yard line. Arndt will go under center and now it looks like Tamar Scott's gonna use a timeout here 
he saw something he didn't like, and Arndt and, uh, Arndt and Weber kind of looked behind him like, what's going on? Who called that? And it was Tamar Scott, and he goes to the sideline with his hands extended out by his side. So some confusion out mm -hmm. there among the Door County players. You're seeing frustration right now. They're going against a great team. They're going against a machine. Um, and, and that's something we said all, all year, and I think they got a little bit, again, going on some of the boards, which I don't know why I do. Uh, you, you start to see where people just discounted them because they thought the South was weak. The South is not weak. Um, you're seeing that speed, and I think Door County may be, maybe physically, maybe mentally, but you're seeing that frustration. Lincoln Way is a great team. They're fast, they're strong, and you're seeing it. They're cocky, they're not very likable, but that doesn't matter. They're a great football team, and you're seeing that all come together right now. So see what Door County draws up here on third and eight. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Eye formation backfield behind Arndt as he ducks under center. Lincoln Way showing blitz. Arndt fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right under pressure, Ooh, and pretty much just throws it away. Wilson went downfield. Arndt threw it on an out, and nobody in the area, and very lucky that they don't actually get an intentional grounding yeah. on that one, Steve. There was nobody on that side, and he really didn't leave the pocket. Did pass the line of scrimmage, but again, there was nobody in that area, and he did not roll out to either side, went straight back. So Wilson, very frustrated. He's been completely silent tonight. He's had no catches on the night. Lincoln Way has shut him down fairly well. And again, that's that's the combination of Alex Fuller, uh, Frank Redding, Chris Muhammad. Hamilton's punt is going to get back to Hughes. It hits at the 50 yard line, nearly hit a Lincoln Way player. Takes a good Door County bounce and will be downed all the way back inside the 35 at about the 33 yard line. So a 50 yard punt for Hamilton on that one, no return. Hamilton has done a nice job punting, a 44 yarder and a 50 yarder on the night for Door County, but it's still Sets Lincoln way up with good field position. They'll be at their own 34 yard line. Don, I'm really impressed by Lincoln Way's discipline. Uh, they've limited the calls, uh, the penalties. They're sticking to their game. Uh, I, I expect you're going to see Phillips a little bit more, a more steady diet. I'm not sure if OJ Williams made the made the trip, but he's a strong tackle, strong runner, more so between the tackles than than the. Uh, in the exterior outside sweeps as Phillips is. So it's gonna be interesting if they tone down that game or they keep the uh, gas pedal floored. Yeah, Phillips just eight carries for 11 yards in this one. I think uh, the Thunder are the only ones that held uh, Lincoln Way under 100 yards rushing in a game this season. Powell, and he does give to Phillips. Phillips dancing around, gets out of an A.J. Hamilton tackle outside the numbers, a stiff arm, and he runs out of bounds under his own power around the 43 yard line, a pickup of nine on the play, and it'll bring up a second down and one, make it a pickup of eight, a second down and two. So there's, uh, there's that handoff to Phillips, as you said. Steve, expect to see a little bit more of him. As Lincoln Way has a 24-0 lead with 9-10 to play in the third quarter. Looking to eat up a little bit of this clock. Powell has Phillips to his right. Two receivers each way for Powell. Barksdale in the slot to the left. Quick handoff to Phillips, and Phillips may have actually taken the snap on that one and runs it straight forward before he's taken down by Hamilton up to the 49-yard line. That will be a pickup of seven on the play. And a first down for Lincoln Way. And Ivan saying snap short and bouncing to Phillips. First and 10 for Lincoln Way at their own 49 yard line. Three receivers right, one to the left. Powell, uh -oh. quick pass out and the ball is dropped. Nice hit. In and out of the hands of Barksdale, but Barksdale took a licking and couldn't hold on to it. It'll be second down and 10 for Lincoln Way at the 49 yard line, their own. They seen that coming, they knew that screen was there and uh, they picked, they read it well. 
8.14 to play in our third quarter. 24 zip, Lincoln Way. Three receivers right, one to the left for Polly as Phillips to his left. Powell moves Phillips to his right side now. Whispers in his ear, probably something a little more than sweet nothings and then pitches it to Phillips to the right side. And Phillips takes a hit and cuts it all the way back across field. Powell gets licked by Wapoose and Phillips is gonna go out of bounds. Hamilton helped force somebody, him out of bounds at the 47 yard line of Door County. A pickup of four yards on the play, but he ran about 40 before Hamilton forced him out. And for Hamilton, that is his seventh tackle of the game. And Lincoln Way, very fortunate that that's not Alex Powell peeling himself off, laying a block out there. That's Keith Haywood a little slow to get up. Phillips will check out of the game. Coming in for Lincoln Way is UJ Wilkerson, who you brought up before. Yeah, good, good between the tackle runner, strong. Any other team would be a starter. And do we have a flag of some sort? The referee pulled the flag out of his pocket. Referee timeout. No. They're talking things over about something. They just want to make sure on what the down, I think, over there. So far, referees have been done a nice job. So it seems like it may be that the down marker is, uh, is broken over on the far side of the field. So a third and five for Lincoln Way. Two receivers each way. Wilkerson to the right of Powell. Powell in the shotgun, takes the snap under immediate pressure. Got and him. he's gonna be brought down. Brian Beachler with the sack all the way back at the 42 yard line. A loss of 11 on the sack by Powell. Nice job giving the Door County faithful something to rattle. You see it, if you're watching on YouTube, you see the screen rattling. Door County, the Door County fan base is just dying for something to get excited about. And for Beachler, he now has three tackles in the game, including two tackles for loss and a sack. Wilson will go back to receive the punt from Alvarado. He walks out on the field late, but Lincoln Way late getting players onto the field. Six and a half minutes to play in our third quarter. 24-0 Lincoln Way in this 2016 Mid-States Football League Championship game. Alvarado gets off a good punt, angled towards the near sideline and it's gonna go out of bounds at about the Door County 25 yard line and that is it. So it will go down as just a 32 yard punt and doesn't get it inside the 20. So for Alvarado, actually he probably goes down as maybe his worst punt of the night here, Steve, since it didn't land inside the yeah. 20. Took a bad bounce there and you know, you hate to see it. You see a lot of Door County guys head down, dragging a helmet, you know, there's still time. I mean, is it is it feasible? Yeah. Is it possible? Yeah. It's football. And you're still three three possessions, three scores, if, because you've got to go for two anyhow if yeah. you're Door County without Natwick here. Aren't in the shotgun, two receivers each way. Tamar Scott to his left. He gives it to Scott. Scott off right tackle, and Scott plows into that line and is immediately taken down. A pick up a three before Perry Sanders brings him down. They'll bring up second down and seven. And for Sanders, his seventh tackle of the game. Don, he's been a monster all year. I called it in the beginning, and I'll, and I'll stick by that. He says this is his last year. If it is, he's had one hell of a way to go out. Uh, he's playing a dominant defensive tackle position right now. Substitutions for Door County, 5.45 to play. In the third quarter, 24 zip. The lead for Lincoln Way. Door County aren't, has the I formation backfield behind him. Handoff goes to Tamar Scott. Scott off the right side, and he'll be taken down after a gain of a few across the 30 to the 32 yard line. It'll bring up a third down and three. The tackle made by Jeremiah Job. So just a few yards at a time again here for Tamar Scott. Door County 
they can eat up time. They had that 11 minute drive or so in that first half, but they were able, weren't able to come up with any points. Here's a third down and four for the Destroyers with under five minutes to play in the third quarter. Handoff mm. is to Weber and Weber is going to go nowhere. Eaten up by that interior part of the line of Lincoln Way, the tackle made by made by uh, Gary Young for mm. Lincoln Way. No gain, maybe a gain of one for Weber. And it's going to bring up a fourth down and four and Door County will bring on their punting unit. So Door County unable to get anything going here in the second half. They had one big play on their first drive. That's a little putter. Marzell Green no, there back he goes. They're going to fake there he goes. it. He, Hamilton they got him. trying they to got get him. outside, Whoa. and he's licked by wow. Job. No gain on now the play, from? and it's going to be a turnover on downs for Door County. That Job with a big good. hit. His fourth tackle of the game. Wow. Wow. If you're going to do that, I wouldn't do it with the smallest guy in the stadium. Well, he is the one that had the 89-yard pick six two weeks ago against Racine. Trying to get some speed to the outside with him, I guess, there. But now Door County sets Lincoln way up at their own 33 or at the Door County 33-yard line. Whenever you run that fake punt, you got to have a drag man for an option to throw the ball. Well, we saw the last time he threw it in the first yeah. half, though. Yeah, didn't I don't know well. that that's an option after that's having true. seen that. Powell looking to pass, going to the left side. Muhammad with oh, a step. Bobbles, tips, man, and nice can't job, bring Muhammad. it in. Muhammad almost brought it in. It's a real deal athlete right there, Chris Muhammad. Wow. Muhammad had kept it alive, floating out there on his fingertips for a couple of seconds. Uh, couldn't haul it in, and it'll bring up a second down and 10. Huh? Yeah, he was tipped, but he, he did a nice job of concentrating, almost brought that up. Brought that in, I'm sorry. So 4.02 on the clock, Patriots lead 24 zip. Again, guys, tonight was brought to you by Brewskies. Uh, they invite you back to celebrate tonight's uh, game, championship game, you don't have to play with the Patriots or Door, Door County, if you're a MSFL guy, go back to Brewski's and enjoy MSFL game and Michigan win. They empty out the backfield, trips to the right. I'm out. Twins to the left, and Powell takes the first time out of the second half for Lincoln Way. Or drown your sorrows over the Wisconsin loss, you Michigan <laughs> wannabe homer it's to my right here. <laughs> well, what am I going to do, roof in Illinois? <laughs> You root for your home state, man. I'm nah. sorry. That's just how it is. Well, our governor's there getting are, locked up. How are you going to root for are, Illinois? There are laws. There are rules of sports teams. Unless I've, you, I've got a Michigan have a, fishing license. Do you have a Michigan piece of paper that shows that you're a U of M alum? Have you ever worked at the University of Michigan? Yes. Like for the university, not as a contractor. Oh, no, as a contractor. Ah, oh, jeez. I've attended seminars at the <laughs> University of Michigan. Does that count? Uh, I sat just in the because you're, of Michigan just classroom. because you're next to me right now, we'll we'll <laughs> let that one slide. We'll we'll give you credit for it a little bit, I guess. But uh, yeah, I think I might have to hit up Brewskies because when I went down at halftime for concessions, all they had was chips, and that's oh. just that's just not going to uh, appease me right now, having not uh, eaten since uh, about 11:30 this morning. They, you know what? I think they used most of their food in the tailgate. They had uh, bratwurst, hamburgers, chips. All right, you're you're a big guy, and I just told you as a big guy that I haven't <laughs> eaten since 11:30, and now you're telling me about well, all the food that was available somewhere else. You just made fun of my state. I, <laughs> I, I gotta start defending myself. Well, 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 I didn't make fun of your state. You made fun of your state. I just pointed out how are you from Illinois rooting I, for Michigan. I follow you on Facebook. You make fun of my state all the time. I do. <laughs> Three receivers to the right, two to the left for Powell. Powell looking to pass. Uh -oh. Hughes coming out of the backfield nice on a slant and can't come up with it on the coverage was Junior Blucher, who's playing some defensive back for Door County, and he'll bring up a third and 10 for Lincoln Way. And now 
That's five straight incompletions for uh, Tony Powell. Just one of seven here in the second half is Powell after going 10 of 15 for 216 yards and a TD in the first half of play. 24-0 Lincoln Way leads though. They have it third and 10 at the Door County 33 yard line. Two receivers each way for Powell. Muhammad this lined up way Muhammad. up at the 30. Powell no. looking to his right, going deep no to good. the right side. Oh, nice and job. it's gonna be picked off by Blucher. Blucher at the goal line, he's gonna bring it out. Blucher the 10, the 20, down the far sideline, 30. Blucher the 40, and he's gonna go out of bounds at the 45 yard line, and maybe that's what Door County needs to Let's inject see. a little life into him. Junior Blucher with the interception, the first pick of the season for Blucher. You know, Don, I've said it a million times, they gotta score. You cannot walk away, and they gotta do it quick. This is not a big, you know, big strike team, so you gotta get that first score. So with 344 to play in the third quarter, Door County will have it. Best starting field position of the game for Door County at their own 44. Best previous to this was their own 31. So what can the Destroyers do here? Maybe a little change of momentum for Door County. Well, Robbie Fritch will break out to the left side. Two receivers to the right. Wilson out wide to the right. Aren't flanked by running backs. Tamar Scott on his left. Looking to pass. Bullet. Gajewski oh, threw his hands. Off. Incomplete at the 40. In and out of the hands of James Pierce. And he'll bring up second and 10. A bullet there from Arndt. And Arndt is now misfired on his last four passes. He's just one of five here in the second half. They got to change something up. Leakaway sitting in that cover too. They're playing press coverage with Muhammad. It's going to be hard to beat Muhammad. You got to go to the other side and you got to take a risk. On Fuller is just completely neutralized. Wilson, their leading receiver in this game. Playing man one-on-one. -on -one. Hand off to Baker. Baker up the gut and Baker will get to midfield before he's taken down by Brandon Spencer. A pickup of six, well, make it five. They mark him at the 49. A pickup of five on the play and he'll bring up a third down and five for Door County. And now they move it up a yard. Make it a third and four for Door County. At midfield, 3-10 to play in the third quarter. Will Robbie Fritch out to the left side. Gajewski and Wilson to the right. Baker and Tamar Scott in the backfield on each side of Arndt. Arndt fakes the handoff to Baker, rolls out to his right. Gajewski wide open, oh. loses his footing and can't come down with it at the 20 yard line. And when things are going bad, sometimes they just keep going that way. Steve Gajewski was five to 10 yards behind the defensive back. He started to lose his footing at the 25 yard line and then was going to the ground already at the 20 and couldn't hold on to the ball. And this is a situation where you have to make them catches. And I've said this a million times, Lincoln Way has one of the best secondaries in the game. If they give you that, that opening, you have to take it. They're one of the best teams, not just in the MSFL, but in the Midwest. Dominique Escobar, you'd probably agree with me right now. Again, I've said it a million times, the North is the team. This Hamilton is the team in the North. Hamilton a running start, sorry. Well, that'll get down at the nine yard line, so a 41 yard punt. Everybody talked about how good this Door County defense is, and, and I think they kind of discounted how good the Lincoln Way Patriots defense is. Just because you have a good offense doesn't take away the fact that you have a great defense. That you're seeing it tonight. That they're they're fast at every position. Perry Sanders is dominant. The linebackers are very good, and Muhammad and, and I've told you a million times, Alex Fuller is next level this year. And Fuller has just completely shut down Andre Wilson who's an excellent receiver for Door County. 47 catches, 936 yards, and nine TDs on the year. He's barely sniffed the ball tonight, and anything 
that Arn has tried to throw his way hasn't been even close. One receiver to the right, two receivers, three receivers to the left for Powell. He has Phillips to his left, hands it off to Phillips. Phillips slips a tackle and then is brought down hard by Hamilton and LeClue as he gets across the 10 up to the 13 yard line. A pickup of four for Phillips. Second down and six for Lincoln Way. Good job again by that offensive line. Very, uh, not very, you know, they don't talk about them well. They're not a big talent, uh, skill position, I should say, but one of the best, or probably the best in the Mid-States Football League. They switch the formation, they flip it. Powell looking to pass under immediate pressure, slips nice away job, from LeClue. Sally chasing him down with Sally around his waist. Powell is able to throw it away. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. That's what they're saying. And no flag, they're gonna talk about it. And it looks like they're gonna let it go as an incomplete pass. So it it'll close. bring up a third down and six. It was close. Then again, I mean, that's what I'm just saying though. Tony Powell, he doesn't see you, but he feels it. He, he's very good at what he does. He knows when it's coming. Seven straight incompletions now for Powell. 157 to play here in the third quarter. It's a third and six for Lincoln Way. They send two receivers each way for Powell. Phillips will now break out of the backfield and go over to the right. So three receivers to the right, two to the left. Empty backfield for Powell as he's in the shotgun. Powell flips it and it's incomplete looking for Trudeau. Jumping on it was Wapus, but it's a forward shovel pass. It'll be incomplete and that's the eighth straight incompletion now for the three time MSFL MVP. And that'll force Lincoln Way to have to punt here with 152 to play and the ball at their own 13 yard line. You know what though, not a bad play call because you're coming with you know heavy pressure. If you do get Trudeau in that seam and you manage to get a, a, a quick slot, it's, he, he's off for the races. So not a bad play call. Wilson is late getting on. I mean, that there's the whole thing too. Here's your one of your key players and Wilson late getting on the field. And now he calls for a fair catch and he's contacted. Ooh, that's a flag. Hughes should that's be flagged, flag. but he doesn't get flagged and Wilson kind of following after Hughes with the ball. But it's gonna be a first and 10 for Door County at the Lincoln Way 46 yard line. So the first time this game that Door County has started with the ball in Lincoln Way territory and just a 33 yard punt. I think you're starting to see that, or you've been seeing that frustration from, from Wilson just being tied up in Fuller all game. And he'll be one on one with Fuller on the near side of the field again. Two receivers to the left, aren't I formation backfield behind him of Weber and Scott. Arndt takes, gives to Scott. Scott, a little bit of a lane up the middle. Nice He'll shot. get down inside the 40 in Lincoln Way territory before Gary Young is able to bring him down. The fourth tackle of the game by Gary Young. And a pickup of six yards by Tamar Scott. He has 65 yards rushing in the game now. And a lot of people may be thinking it's too little too late, but you have to try something, and you, you hope that he picks a lane and, and breaks one. Door County nearing 150 yards rushing as a team in this game, so they've been able to get that part done, but haven't been able to find the end zone. Fakes the handoff to Weber, gives to Scott. Scott goes off of left tackle, and he's going to be taken down by Jeremiah Job out there. A gain of a couple of yards will make it third down and two for Door County at the 37 yard line. 38 yard line of Lincoln Way. You know, it's way too early to do this, but if you're to talk about a player of the game and his name will never be mentioned because he hasn't done, he hasn't got a pick or many tackles. Alex Fuller is just shutting down the num one of their number one receivers. Fantastic job by that young man. Their number one receiver, one of the yeah. top receivers in the Mid-States Football League. And it's been absolute shutdown. Quick pass to Baker and Baker on the screen able to convert it into a first down. A pickup of eight yards on the play, and that may wind out the third quarter here. 
for Baker, his fourth catch of the game. Just the second first down of the second half for Door County. And they will go into the fourth quarter with a first and 10 at the Lincoln Way 30 yard line. So Door County with a bit of a drive going here in the third, heading into the fourth quarter. 24 to zip is the Lincoln Way lead. Twenty twenty four to zip is the lead for Lincoln Way as we start the fourth quarter of play. See if Door County can keep this drive going here in the fourth quarter. Door County hasn't been able to get in the end zone here yet. They've missed their field goal kicker. Eric Natwick a couple of times. I'm not, I'm staying there. As Door County is ready to go, two receivers off to the right side, one to the left. I formation backfield behind TJ Arndt. Tamar Scott, the deep back, Weber, the fullback for Door County. Aren't looking to pass, has some time, pocket around him, throwing, end zone will Robbie Fritch, and it might have been picked. Intercepted by Lincoln Way, and coming down with it is Antoine Jones. Nice job, again, Lincoln Way, State, Lincoln Way secondary. Antoine Jones with the interception. And it's going to be first and 10 for Lincoln Way, 14.51 to play in the game. So the Door County drive stops at the Lincoln Way 30 yard line, interception in the end zone, the second interception of the game for TJ Arndt. And Lincoln Way takes over at their own 20 yard line. So Tony Powell, with the ball in his hands again here. And is that kind of the nail in the coffin That's at this it. point, Steve? That's it. You're not going to, you know, that that defense is just next level right now. They're playing their absolute best. You've seen Alex Fuller. A lot of guys criticize him, uh, just some of the talk, but he's backed it up. He is a, he's an all-star. And there's a lot of chatting from the Door County, yelling from the Door County sideline here, too, out at their team. Phillips to the left of Powell, two receivers each way for Powell. Uh -oh. That ball deflected up in the air and then knocked up in the air by Roy. A nice little pass defense for Kyle Roy. Roy has quietly had a pretty nice game for Door County. Three tackles now with that pass knocked down. And it'll bring up a second down and 10. And that is nine straight incompletions for Tony Powell. And look, Door County hasn't played... Their defense has not played a bad game. Yeah, they gave up some big runs to you know, Muhammad after the catch, but their defense is just, they've shut them down and with no punt, with no field goal game, they've been forced to, uh, they've just been, it's an utter shutout. And I also don't see Jake Hall out there, their other corner, they have two completely different corners because Hulbert was injured. I'm trying to scan the sideline to see if I can find Jake Hall. Pass for Muhammad, and Muhammad threw his hands, and then he's hit by Donnie Johnson after the fact. It'll bring up a third down and 10 for Lincoln Way. The 10th straight incompletion is Tony Powell just one for 11 here in the second half. That ball, I, I thought that ball was hit by the linebacker, but yeah, uh, you know, he's struggling. But again, when your defense is as dominant as it's been tonight, you, you can afford that. So a third and 10 here for Lincoln Way. Got the ball off of an interception in the end zone. Powell has Phillips to his right. Two receivers each way for Powell. Check that three to the left. Powell under pressure from Brandt, throws it to nice Phillips and Phillips taken down by Donnie Johnson. That's gonna be a loss of six yards on that pass play. So the first pass, the second pass completion of the second half for Tony Powell goes for a loss of six yards. Donnie Johnson, five tackles in the game 
and one tackle for loss now as Alvarado will come on to punt and Wilson out on the field. So Door County punting from their own 15 yard line, or Lincoln Way, sorry, punting from their own 15 yard line as they lose five yards on that drive. Good chance for a good starting field position for Door County. Maybe they have some life left in them yet. See if Wilson can do something on special teams uh -oh. here. Almost oh, got a it. Diving attempt by Polifka. The punt is going to hit at the 44 yard line, take a slight Lincoln Way bounce, and then go out of bounds at the 45. So a 30 yard punt for uh, Alvarado. All right, look, you got field position. It's very unlikely they're going to come back and win this game, but you want to be respectable and score some points. And here's your chance 3 13, 37 left in the game. You're on one of the best field positions you've had so far. Um, now it's time just, uh, there's nothing wrong with running the ball and scoring seven. You, you want to get on the board as an athlete. You don't want to be shut out. So a first and 10 for Door County. As they start this drive, the second straight drive, they start in Lincoln Way territory. Last drive was at the 46, this one at the 45. Looks like Gajewski in there at quarterback, he is. They give to Baker. Baker finds some running room nice run. and Baker will get inside the 40 to the 37 yard line. A pickup of eight on the play and Baker just four carries in the game but he's already got 67 yards rushing. He had that big 48 yeah. yarder in the second quarter. They still do a nice job in misdirection but it, it, it's just too little too late now. And those, uh, those, those pickoffs early in the game and then again Chris Muhammad's athleticism just has been too much. So second down and two for Door County. Well, Robbie Fritch off to the left side. Two receivers left, it'll be Wilson to the right. Gajewski, he's attempted one pass in the game, it was intercepted in the end zone. Fakes the handoff to Scott, rolling out to his left, has the first down and going to be pushed out of bounds at the Lincoln Way 28 yard line. A pickup of nine for Gajewski and a first down. Don, you know who else is having a pretty big game? Quiet again is uh, TZ. Uh, he's done a nice job. He made that big, big stop. The 65 yard run chased him down and again, played his zone. Kept the end, didn't lose contain, and, and really made a nice play on that on that stop. I think he might have been the one that had the fumble recovery yeah. too on the first drive for Door County. Two receivers right, one to the left for Gajewski. He's flanked by Bax. Gajewski takes it, gives to Baker. Baker right up the gut, and Perry Sanders gets just enough of him to slow him down as he gets down to the 25 yard line. A pickup of three on the play. There's another guy, if you're going for player of the game. There, there's, you know, Muhammad without a doubt, Perry Sanders, and, you know, Fuller's gotta get some consideration. Fantastic job tonight. Eight tackles in the game now for Perry Sanders. Over to the right side, two receivers. It's Andrew Lamers and Wilson. Will Robbie Fritch all alone to the right side. Gajewski on the keeper and Gajewski will be stopped after a gain of one inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. Tyrell Webster on the tackle for Lincoln Way. 22 yards rushing in the game for Gajewski on five carries. And you start to hear the fans getting a little frustrated saying do something different. Yeah. The last time they tried with Gajewski, it was an interception, though. Yeah. 11 minutes to play in the game. 24 zip the lead for Lincoln Way. Door County with a third down and six from the Lincoln Way 24-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right. Gajewski takes the snap, gives it to Baker, and Baker runs into the heart of that line and gets a yard to the 23 yard line and he gets up rather frustrated. On the tackle is Gary Young and for Young, that is his fifth tackle of the game. You know, Don, you probably hear more fans than most people in semi-pro because you have more fans. 
But the thing is, is I know they get frustrated. I know Door County's fans are getting frustrated. But when you're going against a dominant defense, there's only so much you can do. It's not from a lack of trying. They're just a great defense. And as you said, an underrated one. Nobody thought Lincoln Way's defense would, uh, would be shutting out Door County at this point in time. Well, I've, I've said it, just seeing them in the south. They, they, just because their offense is so good doesn't take away from their defense. Gajewski under center, eye formation behind them, and it's a fumbled snap, Not I believe. Good. Wow. And Door County turns it over to Lincoln Way at wow. the Lincoln Way 24-yard line. And who got up with it? It was a fumbled snap. And with the recovery was Tyrell Webster. My pick to click. The second fumble of the game for Gajewski. And with 9.52 remaining, Lincoln Way takes over with the football at their own 22-yard line. So things went so perfectly for Door County at Horlick Field two weeks ago. And everything has gone just the opposite here tonight for him, Steve. Two backs in the backfield, flanking Powell. Wilkerson to his right, Phillips to his left. Two receivers right, one to the left. The handoff is to Phillips, and Phillips will be taken down by Hamilton as he gets up to the 30-yard line. A pickup of eight by Phillips and a little extra pushing and shoving now out on the field as Sally took exception from Door County to something. Well, you know, to touch on your point about how well they did at Horlick, how everything kind of fell their way, one thing with football, unlike baseball, you know, everybody talks about the Cubs, why, I don't know. But they talk about them. You never know what could happen in a five- or seven-game series. Well, in football, the best team tends to win, and I think you're seeing that out there right now. Imagine we're going to see a lot of the ground game at this point in time, Steve, as Phillips and Wilkerson are in the backfield with Powell. And the handoff this time goes to Wilkerson, and Wilkerson is going to be taken down by Brandt, but looks like he's very close to the first down if he doesn't have it. Wilk, like I said, Wilkerson's a starter on any other team. He's a hard runner, really good in, inside the tackles. Anybody else, he's a starter. I, I, I really want. You're going to see big things from him, uh, whether they go next year with Phillips and uh, Wilkerson. Just a very good player. And it's going to be a first down for Lincoln Way. No measurement on the play. And Lincoln Way moves the chains. Their fourth first down of the second half. Nine in the game for Lincoln Way. Wilkerson to the right of Powell. Phillips to his left. Powell takes, fakes the handoff, uh -oh. looking to pass, throwing middle of the field. Nice Trudeau, and he picks it off his knees, and he's off to the races. Trudeau from Powell wow. nice for job. 68 yards, and he goes and runs into and hugs uh -oh. the goalpost, and that's going to be 15 gonna be yards, but it's a 68-yard pass completion. And Trudeau with a big catch, okay. his fourth of the game, and that'll leave him just a couple yards short of 100. Now here's something you're going to hear. And it's gonna, you're gonna hear from a lot of fans of DC. Why are they throwing up 24 to nothing? Because they can. The name of the game is stop the other team. You can't complain about running up the score. If you can't stop them, if you can't score, this is what happens to it in a game. And I don't know that they're running up the score. No. I mean, you need to change things up still. There's still eight minutes to play in the game. So you got to do something, you know. You can't just sit here and just con constantly run, run, run the ball. Run. Right, right. Lincoln Way is doing the absolute right thing. So it'll be unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Trudeau, and that'll go for 15 yards on the kickoff. Alvarado on to try and make it a 31 zip lead for Lincoln Way. Snap is high. Vesvardis pulls it down well, and they put it through. And that makes it 31-0 in favor of Lincoln Way with 8.03 to play in the game. And it looks like Lincoln Way, the Patriots, the third time is gonna be the charm as they have a big lead 
halfway through the fourth quarter over the Door County Destroyers in the 2016 MSFL Championship game. And fans, if, if you're out there, or players, if you're out there and you're in another league, my question to you is why? You're seeing the absolute best play tonight. Uh, Door County, the Lincoln Way Patriots. If you're an athlete, you want to push yourself, this is where you do it, the Mid-States Football League. Been an outstanding night of football with Brewski's providing beer and libations for all players. Been a big turnout. This is where you want to be. This is how you show yourself as an athlete. And just checking, there's only been one other shutout in MSFL championship game action. That was when the Chicago Lawmen defeated the Cook County Punishers 9-zip back in 2003, Steve. I believe this is the first blowout um, in about 10 years. Yeah, it's been some good games. So depending what you go by off of a blowout, The Thunder, your Thunder beat the Bolingbrook Bucks 36 to seven in 2007. There have been a couple of other uh, 20 point victories or so in there, but that would be the uh, that would be the largest margin of victory to this point in time. 29 points. This one is 31, and it could be more before the game's over. Alvarado's kick is taken at the 26 yard line by Baker. Baker uh -oh. right up the middle. Baker across nice midfield and stays on his feet. And Baker finally taken down at the Lincoln Way 41 yard line. He just kind of looked to be going half speed yeah. and found a lane and just kept going, Steve. Good effort by Baker. Uh, he just saw a lane, kicked into that second gear and then almost broke it. And here's the thing for Lincoln Way or for Door County. You look at this half, and they've started at their own 44, the Lincoln Way 46, the Lincoln Way 45, the Lincoln Way 41. There's opportunities for points there, and Door County has not been able to come through. That's that defense. Two receivers each way, Baker in motion, slot left to the right. Arndt takes it, pump fakes, now he's going deep for Wilson, nope. and Pick. it's gonna be intercepted back at the 12 yard line. Picked off by the Patriots, and the interception is picked. The interception by Antoine Jones, or check that, James Pierce, his first pick of the game, and Arndt throws another interception. And here's something you guys got to think about out there if you're watching this game Alex Fuller, young. Tony Powell, young. Calvin, young. All these guys are young guys. This is not a team. Uh, like the Raiders of last year that were getting old and getting ready to retire. This is a very young team. You may be seeing the beginnings of a dynasty. Yeah, Racine coming in had won the last two, three of the last four. Lincoln Way has been here now two straight games and now they have too many in the huddle. And they're gonna get a five yard penalty for having 12 men in the huddle here is Lincoln Way. Just their second penalty here in the second half. Seven for 80 yards in the game for the Patriots. It'll be a first and 15 as they're back at their 25 yard line. Two receivers to the right. Nope, now one will go off to the left. So one receiver to the right, that's Vesvardis. Two to the left. Powell with backs on each side. UJ Wilkerson is to his right. And on his left side is a mystery man. <laughs> a number that we don't have. You know, and that's a, a gain of a couple yards on the play. There's another guy who goes unheralded is Johnny Visvardas. Uh, probably again, any other team, if he chose to, he'd be a star uh, behind some of the best in the, in the league. Trudeau, Phillips, uh, Lexus, when he was here, and he just stays and, and, and does what's asked of him. And that's how you build a championship team. Wilkerson will be on the left side. Another running back on the right. 
Two receivers left, one to the right. Hand off to Wilkerson. He has a blocker in front of him. Wilkerson gets the corner, the 30, the 35, and Hamilton able to drag him down. Oh, that's going to be flagged. And then Wilkerson no. swipes the ball away and then runs into the official. But a first down for Wilkerson. I'm telling you, next year it's going to be dominant. Pickup of 15 yards for Wilkerson as they move the chains. And with six and a half minutes to play, it's a first and 10 for Lincoln Way. I'd like to thank the uh, Muskegon Hitmen for providing me with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Two it's been receivers. Been a, great it's been a great fan section. Powell in the shotgun. He has Wilkerson standing a yard or two behind him to his right. He gives to Wilkerson. Wilkerson right up the gut, and Wilkerson will be brought down by Hamilton, but he gets the yardage all the way up to the 48-yard line, a pickup of six for UJ Wilkerson. See the way he runs? If he just brought his pad level down just two inches, he'd be a dominant football player. He'll check out. Marzell Green will check in for Lincoln Wave. As Vardis off to the right side, and you're talking about Vesvardis, and he had 11 catches, 151 yards, and two TDs on the season for Lincoln Way. And again, if that kid was on any other team, he'd probably be in the 500-yard range. Powell audibling at the line. Takes a snap, looking to pass, looking to his left, and it's picked off. Uh -oh. Intercepted by score. Door County. That is Alex Whitney with the interception, and he's taken out of bounds at the 32-yard line of Lincoln Way. And Alex Powell with the pick. The first he's thrown of the game. And the Lincoln Way drive ends. And Door County with a good chance of at least getting some points on the board and not suffering the second shutout in Mid-States Football League history. They'll have it at the Lincoln Way 34 yard line with 5.17 to play in the game. Donahue out to the right side. Wilson's going to exit. Lamers will be the receiver on the left side. Had three backs in the backfield with Matt Geske under center. And then Door County has to take a timeout. Their second timeout of the half. That leaves them with one with 5.17 to play. So big games offensively for, Dor or for Lincoln Way by Chris Muhammad. Five catches, 173 yards, and a TD. That was a 95-yarder. Phillips has 45 yards rushing on the game. So Phillips with a good second half, 42 yards. Here in the second half for Phillips. So can Door County get on the board? That's the question here. Two receivers left, one to the right. Geske in the shotgun, flanked by Bax. Geske gives it to Tamar Scott, and Tamar Scott is able to power his way down to the 30-yard line before he's taken down. A pickup of four, it'll be second down and six for, or third down and six for Door County. Door County has been able to move the ball on the ground, but just not enough. So a second down and five, second down and six, check that, for Door County. A lot of time in the huddle here for the Destroyers. Off to the right side, Dwayne Williams. Two receivers to the left, I formation backfield behind Geske. Geske 
fakes the handoff, rolls out to his left. He's gonna try and keep it, is able to slip a tackle and then steps out of bounds at the 30. A pickup of just a yard on the play. Don, something's wrong with the uh, Muskego Hitman here. <laughs> something's always been wrong with the Muskego <laughs> Hitman. It's just your perspective now. Yeah. <laughs> and they actually move it. Actually, they give him credit for about four yards on that play. The Raiders know there have been problems with the Muskego Hitman. <laughs> Third and three. More specifically, Chris Rates. There's really something off right there. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get back that two minutes. <laughs> hey, he was showing what from his surgery, right? He had didn't he have uh, he had a big injury this yeah. year, right? Yeah. He said it was something else, but yeah. Yeah. I formation backfield behind Geske. Geske hands it off to Tamar Scott, and Scott going to be close to the first down as he gets down to about the 25 yard line. Looks like he's going to be just short, and he'll bring up a fourth and one. And guess who was on the tackle there again, Steve? Perry Sanders. Perry Sanders with That's his the ninth man. tackle of the game. And with 3.36 to play, we have an injury timeout. There's a Door County Destroyer player down, and that is Tamar Scott. And Scott it looks, looks bad. to be his left leg, I think. A lot of guys kneeling down right now. And All now right. the Patriots back up, and uh, that could be uh, that could be bad news here for Tamar Scott as the trainers are out there taking a look at him, and a lot of guys again taking a knee, and Lincoln Way kind of clearing the field a little bit here, and uh, hopefully we don't have another long stoppage here. Yeah. But it looks like that's going to be the case as I see Ryan Zulke takes off his helmet, and he walks away from that pack. Tell you what, it looks like we may have a long delay. Something we didn't get a chance to do for you was to play the interview that I had with MSFL president. Oh, nope, it looks like they're getting them up. So oh, we'll good. Hold. That's good. good. That is very really good, good news. sign. So he is up and being helped off the field as he walks off very gingerly. And it looks like the night is done for Tamar Scott. And Scott, he had a nice game despite the outcome here for Door County. You know, there was many, many very good, uh, good players on Door County. You're just going against the buzzsaw right now. They're hot, they're, uh, they're a young team, they're very skilled. And uh, I think they were a lot of teams favorites. I picked them by 14 and you're seeing why. Scott not putting any pressure on his left leg. He'll finish the game 23 carries for 73 yards and now it's a fourth and one for Door County and Gajewski or Arndt that is back in the game he hands off to Gajewski nope. and Gajewski Short. depending on the spot Arlinder Wade in there along with Perry Sanders and it's going to be very close this they're is going to be a measurement him, I think it, it they gave short. him just enough yeah they're going to give it to him but it was a short it was short and Perry Sanders in there with his 10th tackle of the game and that is Told a you. first down I'm going to put you on a spot. Who's the player of the game? Are, are we just doing one player of the game? Defense, offense. Defensive player of the game. Uh, it's tough. Uh, yeah, you know, it, you either got to go with Fuller or Sanders Yeah. for defensive player of the game. I mean, uh, good game also had here by Antoine, but will Robbie Fritch makes the catch at the 16. And he'll be taken down at the 15 yard line. A pickup of nine yards. And it'll bring up a second down and one. So you gotta go with Sanders or Fuller. Fuller completely eliminated, completely eliminated uh, uh, Wilson from this game. And he had two tackles and what, an interception in the game. Mm -hmm. Sanders has had at least 10 tackles unofficially. Just plugging up the middle. I mean, Tamar Scott had 70 some yards, but it was still only averaged about three and a half yards a carry as they try to flip that one out to Whitney, and that's going to be incomplete. It'll bring up a second, a third down and three. So, uh, I guess I offer those two suggestions <laughs> for you. If you, I <laughs> if I had to make an argument, I would say this: Door County is not known as a passing team; they're known as a running team. Perry Sanders instrumented the shutdown of the run so I'd have to call Perry Sanders but to not call out what 
Alex Fuller did would be ignorant. He was incredible tonight. You've been seeing the maturation of this man all year long, and now you're seeing it. This guy is one of the best. Um, offensively, Chris Muhammad all day long. Yeah, Muhammad, I think that's an agreement. The one thing I will say is Door County still put up like 150 yards rushing in this game, and not just late. As Baker takes that ahead down to the 10 yard line, a pickup of six, and it'll move the chains as we get to the two minute warning. And that is the fifth first down here of the second half to bring us that two minute warning. So, you know, I. They, they shut down Scott to three yards a carry, but still, you look at Baker, and now in the game, he has seven carries for 77 yards. So they've still had 150, 175 yards rushing in this game. Sanders, though, has had the 10 tackles in the game, but just the fact that they did shut down, that it was one man that shut down Andre Wilson, held him to no catches in this game, and I, that might be the first time this season. I think I'm going to buy into what you're selling and say it's Fuller. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to argue against him. And, again, he didn't make the all-star team because the stats weren't in. But that kid, man, having seen him play with the Lions, with the Patriots, he's he's gotten so much better. I mean, the kid... Um, He's one of those guys, it's a shame he didn't play college football because he's just grown to be such a good player and um, could be could be good for years to come. Just, just unbelievable job tonight. Baker loses three, so Door County trying to avoid the shutout here is all that's left for them as they trail 31 to zip. The Gatorade dump has already happened. Open. Aren't throwing towards the sideline, and that one is knocked away knocked away by Antoine Jones and I don't know maybe he's starting to make a late uh, late uh, quest for that too he would be one of the, the yeah. probably the third name that I would put in there of people that have a, that would deserve that is he's had three tackles that fumble recovery and interception a couple passes defensed out there uh, the DBs for for Lincoln Way have done a great job here tonight you know being with the Chicago Thunder and being predisposition to dislike the link away Patriots just being in the same division and given our history I'll, I'll continue after this call Arndt throws it up and he hits Whitney but Whitney is going to be hit right away at the original line of scrimmage the tackle out there made by Anthony Hughes he's been rather quiet tonight and they'll bring up a third down or a fourth down and 14 for Door County their last chance at getting on the scoreboard in this one. But I just want to finish off. I know Mr. Escobar said that with the, I, I'm promoting the Thunder. And what, I, what I'm basically saying is so many people discounted this team because they were in the South. Now you're seeing it. They're dominant. They're a very good team. They'll be good for years to come. And I hope everybody sees that tonight. Um, whatever they talk on, on message boards, it doesn't matter. They back it up. They're a very good team. Congratulations to the Lincoln Way Patriots. Congratulations to the ownership, the broadcast team. Uh, you, you, actually, you absolutely came out here and backed everything you've set up. And again, uh, from the Chicago Thunder general manager uh, and as a player, absolutely respect everything you've done this year and to the Door County Destroyers. Congratulations to you both, but more so, congratulations to the Leak Away Patriots. Enjoy it. Um, go out, go to Florida, go represent the Mid States Football League and uh, show how good you are. And you are an absolutely very good team and, and go out and be great. And for the first time since 2003, the go MSFL South. championship game has been a shutout. As the Lincoln Way Patriots shut out the Door County Destroyers 31 to zero and they are your 2016 Mid-States Football League champions as they finish running out the clock here. And for Lincoln Way, it started out with an Alvarado field goal. They led 3-0 four minutes into the game. Then a Barksdale 70-yard TD return off of an interception by Chris Muhammad where he pitched it back, and it was 10-0. Second quarter, 4.33 to play. Phillips, a two-yard TD run made it 17-0. 
That score would go, uh, then they would put up another score with 124 to play. Powell hit Muhammad on their longest pass play of the season, 95 yards. Make it 24-0 going into halftime. Our only score in the second half was a Powell 68-yard pass to Trudeau with 8.03 to play in the game. And that may gave us our final of 31 to zip in this one. And the Lincoln Way Patriots, the third time's a charm. They yes, are sir. the Mid-States Football League champions. They finally didn't have to face a team from Racine. And they <laughs> were able to win the title. And they do it here in Wisconsin at Hart Park in Wauwatosa. And we will have the presentations of the trophies on the field in just a few minutes. And we will carry that for you here live on the MSFL feed of the broadcast. And congratulations to the Lincoln Way Patriots as a rival. Uh, why I may not be very happy uh, for my own situation to see you guys as you've matured, as you've proven yourself as a champion, both as coaches, owners, uh, players, congratulations. You absolutely 100% deserve it. Um, good job, and you know, to win one is hard, to repeat is even harder, so good luck. To, good luck and enjoy your championship. Go out, represent the Mid-States Football League, and go for that national championship. Don't bother with any stupid tournament that Tom Hawkins may, may offer. Go play a real championship and uh, get it done for us in the Mid-States. You are the champs and you've earned every bit of it. So the first time in five years, South, the South Southern Conference wins the Mid-States Football League title. The last time it was the Roscoe Rush in 2011. And that was actually a battle of uh, the Rush and uh, the Indiana Generals. So yeah. two teams from down south before we had the north-south as we have it now. So big victory for the Lincoln Way Patriots, 31 to zip over the Door County Destroyers. A good season for the Destroyers. It's a team that their second year in the league last year, in their first game they played the Raiders and they just looked overmatched, Steve. It looked like yeah. it was going to be a laugher season for them really. But then they turned things around, and by the time they came to Racine for that Northern Conference Championship game, that was a good back and forth battle. Now this year, they took it one step further. They were able to take down Racine to be able to make it to this championship game, and they just didn't have any answers for the Lincoln Way Patriots here. But that's something you look for in a team, though, too, is how they build and yeah. kind of what the MSFL is looking to do with the two different divisions, mm -hmm. with the Thomas and the Rikert division, to be able to give those teams in the Rikert a chance to build up. Well, here's the thing. With Door County, you're, you're in an area where you don't have a big Metroplex. You're not pulling from a big area. But you are the only team. They made it to the – they won the WSFL title, which is now a Turkey Bowl league. But at the time it was legit, you come to the Mid-States Football League and in this year, second year, you've made it to the title title game. You build on that. It's going to help them recruit. It's going to help them move forward. And that's what we are as the Mid-States Football League. So many people say, oh, you can't go there. It's a Raiders League. Well, here, it's proven it's not a Raiders League. Door County was able to go in to a, a packed Horlick Stadium and win the game. Now, they didn't come over because Lincoln Way built a, one hell of a squad. It's their league right now. Can they maintain it? They're going to push everybody. They're going to push me as a Thunder owner. They're, they're going to push the Lions, the Mustangs. The Raiders are going to have to come back from this. This is, the, this is a dominant team. And so they did the trophy presentations. They didn't have the, uh, the audio going, but Rob Feltner down there uh, giving out the trophy to Door County for being runners-up and now letting Lincoln Way celebrate out on the field. And now Rob's making his way to hand them the league championship trophy as the Lincoln Way Patriots take down the Door County Destroyers 31 to zip. And you know, one thing that I'm watching on the field right now is look at Zulke. Yeah. Sitting there, hands on his hips, watching that celebration. And, and as a player, what's going through your, as a player and in his case, an owner, what's going through your head at that time? Well, right now you're thinking, what do I have to do? What do I have to do to catch this team? It's not, you know, you may look at them and think it's defeat. It's not. As an athlete, you're thinking that's where they are. They got the championship. It's the number one championship in the Midwest. It really is. Nothing's close. You want to get there, and you got to think, how do I do it? How do I beat this team? 
How do I get past an Alex Fuller that shut down my number one receiver? How do I get past a Perry Sanders that just destroyed my offensive line? How do I get past a, a Chris, Chris Muhammad that got a ball and then ran it 95 yards? You got to think, how do I build to get past this? And that's, and that's what he's thinking right now. He's looking out at that squad. It's a juggernaut. How do you get past that? And that's every Mid Mid-States football team right now, anybody coming to the Mid-States Football League. And if you're not coming to Mid-States Football League, you're screwing yourselves because you're missing out on a great league. Tamar Scott able to limp off the field. He's holding the runner-up trophy as he exits. And any final thoughts, I guess, Steve, since we uh, had the trophy presentation already, any final thoughts about uh, the season or uh, recruiting for the league for next year and, and anything along those lines? Yeah, for recruiting the, for next year, look at it, guys. Don't you want to hold one of those up? If you get into the Rikert, you get a chance to come in as a wild card and win that. That's the league. That's the trophy you want. You don't want an IFL championship. No disrespect to them. They do their thing. They play football. That's the championship you want. If you're an athlete, you want the Mid-States Football League Championship. Raiders have held it multiple times. Thunder have held it multiple times. Now Lincoln Way Patriot has it. You want to come here and knock them off the, off the, off the mountain. How do you do that? That's up to you. You got to, to me, if you're an athlete, if you're an owner, this is where you want to come. So guys, get in hold of the Mid-States Football League. Come to the Mid-States Football League and try to knock them off. If it's me, Alex Fuller, defensive MVP, co-defensive co MVP, how do you take it away from Perry Sanders? Yeah, I don't know that you can. So I, I agree I with you. Go Those with two guys, Fuller and Sanders, uh, you know, they, they were the ones that wreaked the most havoc out there. As you said, Muhammad, no doubt on, on, on offense, uh, they had no answer for No, for Muhammad, Muhammad, without a doubt, offensive MVP. Those two got to be co-MVPs co on defense. Just incredible job. Want to remind you, if you want to watch a replay of this, you can find it on the Mid-States Football League Facebook page, the link to it. So you can go through and you can uh, watch a replay of the game. That will be up uh, pretty much immediately following the game, I do believe. And you can uh, catch a replay of our broadcast. I also want to thank Brewskies, who sponsored the uh, pregame tailgate party and uh, were great sponsors in the post -game, uh, official postgame spot for the game tonight. So make sure you head there to 76th and Blue Mound area if you're in the area here in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa area, and uh, celebrate with the Lincoln Way Patriots. Drown your sorrows with the Door <laughs> County Destroyers over there as that's where uh, everybody will be heading. Also want to thank the hosts for this uh, championship game, the uh, Milwaukee County Chargers. They grabbed the bull by the horns and they ran with this one and they did an excellent job first time uh, hosting a championship game like this. So want to say kudos to Scott Bolin and their whole team here, uh, the Milwaukee County Chargers that normally call historic, uh, call Hart Park their home. Almost yeah. slipped up there with uh, <laughs> Horlick Field. They call Hart Park their home. Also uh, want to thank uh, Ivan Ortega for uh, providing uh, set the setup of all this and the uh, video for our broadcast tonight. We thank you for tuning in. Also, Steve uh, Slivka, thank you for uh, for being my partner here tonight. Also want to thank my normal radio partner for the Raiders, Tom Christensen, who created our intros and our outs for our broadcast here tonight as well. Go ahead, Tom. You're very welcome. Yeah, so <laughs> want to thank him. He's also the head of officials for the Mid-States Football League, so he was here in that capacity tonight. It was 31 to zip in favor of the Lincoln Way Patriots. For the first time, they're MSFL champions. 2016 MSFL champions, the 17th Mid-States Football League championship game. For Ivan Ortega and Steve Slivka, I'm Don Wadowitz, reminding you to live life to the fullest and be good to one another. 31 zip, Lincoln Way, 2016 MSFL champions over the Door County Destroyers. You've been listening and watching the Mid-States Football League championship game here on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in and have a great rest of your weekend. Great night. You have been listening to the Mid-States Football League 2016 Championship Game, brought to you by Brewskies, located near 76th and Blue Mound Road in Wauwatosa. Follow the Mid-States Football League.